Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte. Here. Did you hear me? Gina Barros. Here. Tian Brooks. Eric Brusitis. Here. Tom Burrows. Here. Iris Cabrera. Here. Phil Caponegro. Here. Frank Carbone. Here. Frank Carbone. Here. Stephen Chesler. Here. Michael Turicella. Here. Teresa Cynthiata. Here. Giovanni D'Amato. Here. Aaron Drinkwater. Here. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Here. Arthur Dibinowski. Julia Amanda Foster. Harry Michael Churchill is present. Chairperson Fuller. Here. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Katie Horowitz. Sonia Iglesia. Here. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Present. Ryan Coonan. Yoel Landau. Marie Lianza. Here. Abraham Lipovitz. Yoel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Here. Sante Maselli. Toby Moskowitz. Martin Niederman. Rabbi Niederman. Mario Dobrik. Janice Peterson. Dana Racklin. Present. Bella Sable. Isaac Sofer. Oh, no. Robert Solano. Here. Del Teague. Here. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Here. Maria Vieira. Here. Here. Ste Stephen Present. Weidberg. Here. Simon Weiser. Jerry, did you get any here? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. 24 members, Madam Chair, which is not enough for a quorum. Julie, did you? Jerry, Bogdan did you Bakhorovsky is here. Bogdan Bakhorovsky is present. Katie Denny Horowitz is here. Jerry, if I may, Bogdan is here. So we now have 26. We have a quorum. Joel Gross is here. You hear me? Yes. Yes, Mr. Gross. That's 20, 27. Julia Force is here. Do you hear me? Yes. Jerry, you got me in. Jerry, you got me in. Bogdan? Yes, Bogdan. Thank you. Okay, so the count went up, right? Okay. Okay, uh, we'll get started. Uh, we are, um, we are, Having lots of uh, complaints about our meetings and how long they last. So tonight we're going to the B rule. 
during the whole meeting. To those of you who do not know what the B rule means, it is be brief, be bright, and be gone. If you want to have a question, we'd like you to form it as a question and not as a short story disguised as a question. So let's all be conscious of time because the, so we got a lot of complaints about the meetings running too late. People have families, they have children, they have jobs. So let's be uh, aware of that, okay? And if the, uh, if the board want, board members want to uh, uh, ask a question, please raise your hand in the chat. If there's others that want to uh, ask a question, and I put it in, I put, I mean, the panelists, if you got a question, you put it in the chat. If it's a question, then uh, Sonia will tell me there's a question. Okay, so uh, tonight's agenda, we're going to go to item, due to time constraints, we're going to go to item number three, and then we'll come back to item number two. Okay. Uh, item number three is 824 Metropolitan Avenue. Um, Ms. Lauren George. Ms. George, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Lauren George, and I'm with CMB Consulting, uh, representing 824 Metropolitan Avenue rezoning. I'd like to introduce my colleague Lisa Orantia, who is Land Use Counsel with Ackerman, um, and we would like to share a presentation. Lisa, do you have the presentation ready to share? Yeah. Can I have? Uh, can I share the screen, please? Is someone available to give us um, screen sharing privileges? Yes. Thank you. To Lisa, do you have it? Not yet. Oh, okay, I got it now. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, so um, this is, uh, thank you for having us back to present the project again. Um, this is an application for rezoning. Lauren, would you mind muting? Yes, I'm sorry, I don't know why not. Thank you. Uh, application for rezoning and mapping of a mandatory inclusionary housing area. So we did a pre-certification briefing to the Land Use Committee um, May 3rd, and we were our project was certified by the City Planning Commission on May 17th. Um, the applicant for this uh, application is 824 Metropolitan Avenue owner LLC, and Michael Kuberski is here tonight to answer questions. Uh, Michael is a Brooklyn resident. He lives in Dittmas Park. He's been there for 13 years, lives with his wife and his kids attending public school. With his father, he's developed and improved and managed about 200 units in East Williamsburg since 2001. Um, he owns and operates with his sisters a vegan restaurant in Brooklyn called Modern Love on Union Avenue. And he bought the development site in 2017 with the idea of creating a new building with affordable housing and that maintains neighborhood diversity. Um, so uh, this, the project area is about 19,000 square feet. It's at the southeast intersection of Metropolitan and Bushwick Avenues. And the development area is outlined in red on the screen. That area is 7,500 square feet. The proposed actions are to rezone from a C82 to a R7A with C24 overlay. And that would extend the existing R7A to the north and east. 
um, also to rezone from R six B C two four overlay to R seven A C two four, and that would relocate the R six B boundary to the east and maintain the overlay. And then there's a small rezoning. It affects about 30 square feet at the back of one zoning lot. It's really just to straighten the district boundary line. And again, the second action would be to map a mandatory inclusionary housing area. So the site is at the intersection of Bushwick Avenue and Metropolitan Avenue and Orient Avenue. It's currently zoned C82, which allows commercial and community facility uses as of right. Residential uses are not permitted in the C82. So as of right uses include retail stores and personal service establishments, home maintenance and repair services, large retail, custom manufacturing, and automotive and semi-industrial uses like glass cutting, welding, and small machine shops. Uh, typical uses in C82 are auto, uh, auto showrooms, auto repair shops, warehouses, gas stations, car washes. Um, and they're mapped mainly along major traffic arteries with a concentration of auto uses. Um, there's no height limit in the C82. Uh, buildings are limited by a sky exposure plane. In the, uh, the portion of the project area that's R6B, that allows as a right residential and community facility uses um, and typical developments are four and five story uh, residential. So the surrounding area is mostly residential. It's got some mixed commercial and residential and non conforming manufacturing along Metropolitan Avenue. Um, there are only 2 automotive uses in the C82. Uh, there are no semi industrial uses. Um, a lot of the, uh, the auto related uses have transitioned out, uh, the, the gas station on the southwestern corner of Bushwick Avenue and Metropolitan is now closed. And there was a 1 story factory across the street from the site that's now operating as a bar and down the street on Metropolitan to the east is a 3 former 3 story factory that's being converted to a 4 story residential building. Um, this image uh, lets you see the surrounding area and identifies taller buildings in the area. These are six to nine story buildings, and they're located two blocks away from the site um, to the northeast and to the southeast. So site conditions here, we're looking uh, directly at the development site. Um, one lot, one tax lot is unimproved and it's used for small truck and auto parking. Uh, that's about 5,000 square feet. And then next to it is a small three story building, residential building dating back to 1910. That lot is about 2,500 square feet. Um, at the corner to off to the right of these images is a gas station um, and uh, to the left of these images is a three story residential building. But as I said earlier, the rezoning only affects about 30 square feet in the backyard of that neighbor building. So, the proposed zoning districts um, this is an area that it can accommodate an increase in bulk and density, and it can support the introduction of a residential use because. It's at the intersection of these 3 streets. It has access to public transportation and there are near, nearby commercial overlays that can support uh, local retail needs. The proposed district allows the same range of residential community facility and commercial uses that are allowed in the adjoining R6 B C24 district. Um, and it also will allow the same commercial uses as are allowed in the C8. To district, except that the large retail custom manufacturing, large entertainment and auto and semi industrial uses will no longer be allowed. Um, the new district will create a, a logical transition between the mixed use commercial corridor and the adjoining gas station um, onto the residential R6 B district to the north and east. Um, in some. I'm just going to go back to that slide. In some, 
We're proposing a relatively small extension of the R7A district to allow for new housing that will include affordable housing. And it's a modest increase in the height that would be allowed in the adjoining R6B district, which is five stories um, in order to construct an eight story building. At this broad intersection, uh, the new building will be supplied with light and air to support added density and an unutilized lot, underutilized lot will be developed and put to a productive use. The proposed development is a new eight story mixed use building. Um, it'll have 27,500 square feet of residential, and there will be 6,420 square feet for commercial use. Um, the number of dwelling units was initially proposed to be 36, but we heard the community's desire for adding three bedroom units, and now the dwelling unit count is 34. Um, so, as I said, three bedroom units were added to the bedroom mix, and now uh, the proposed is six studios, 19 one bedrooms, seven two bedrooms, and three two bedrooms, and two three bedrooms, sorry. Um, there will be approximately nine MIH units, and those will be an equal distribution of the total. Uh, so, that means two studios, four one bedrooms two two bedrooms and one three bedroom. Uh, the building will have a 15 foot setback uh, above the six story, 15 foot uh, setback from the street, and it'll also have a 25 foot setback from the adjoining R6B district boundary. The top two stories are only going to consist of um, 2,500 square feet, that footprint. Um, there's no on site parking. Uh, there are seven spaces required for the commercial use and 12 spaces required for the residential use. But the zoning re regulations allow these spaces to be waived. Um, the developer is looking into installing a network hub on the roof that's capable of providing high quality broadband and Wi Fi to the building residents and the larger community. Um, and that would be for about five to twenty dollars a month. Um, and they and uh, we're also looking into incorporating sustainable development features into the building, like solar panels on the roof, high efficiency windows for better better insulation, and energy efficient appliances. Um, in addition, there's going to be outdoor recreation space uh, at the second floor terrace and the seventh floor terrace. Um, we, we heard the community's concerns about affordability, and we've switched from applying option two to the development to option one. This will provide a deeper affordability. Um, and again, we've added three bedroom uh, family sized units. So approximately nine of the 34 units will be inclusionary housing units. Four units at 40% AMI, two units at 60% AMI, and three units at 80% AMI. Uh, this slide shows the income levels at the 40%, 60%, and 80% levels based on family size. Um, and this last slide shows rent levels uh, for these units at these AMI levels. Um, last is a, is a uh, aerial view with a rendering of the proposed building. Um, you can see some of the taller buildings in the area to show context. Um, these, these taller buildings in the area are also, um, they also contain more units. They're on larger size lots. Um, so, for example, the eight story on Metropolitan and Humboldt has 80 units and the two story buildings, the two seven story buildings of Bushwick and Grand have 96 units. So, in comparison, this building is only going to have 34. And uh, that concludes our presentation. I also want to just 
Sorry, this is Lauren. I wanted to just add that the administering agent for the affordable units has been selected, and that is going to be St. Nick's Alliance, um, a community based nonprofit um, that does multi services. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with the organization. Um, and Frank Ling has joined us tonight uh, in case there are any questions about that aspect. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, Del Teague, I, I just wanted to um, say something. It's not a question, but um, I'm happy to see that you really did address some of our um, concerns. I want to make just mention that. Thank you. Rob Zolano. I had a question from that committee. If you can follow up with an answer when you came to the committee, was the current council member and the entering council member have objected to MIH projects and they're only interested in 100% affordable uh, rezonings. Um, have you made any headway um, with that? Because there currently is that stance. Um, and so can you speak to that? I mean, I would say we've spoken to the council member and the, the chief of staff of the current council member about the project. Um, and I won't, I can't characterize, you know, their position on the project, but um, they've been open to it and, you know, eager to see how the Euler process develops, but I would say generally supportive of a project that's um, pretty small and providing 9 permanently low income affordable units thus far. Excuse me. Follow up question, uh, madam chair. So, Ackerman had a had a, a previous project in 2018 on 128 forest where they were also proposing at my age. But the council member was very clear that that would not fly and you guys let go of that project. Why would you have the confidence in this project that you think you can get under the MIH and after you've been denied the 1st time around? I mean, I could just say that I think we're confident that this project has community benefits that will be borne out and we're giving it. A try. I have a question and I can't find a hand to raise. Okay, well, you're not next. Uh, well, uh, Elkins. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, a few questions. So, first was about um, if you could clarify this is a proposed rezoning for that, including the area that's the gas station as well. Yes. Okay, and so who owns that property and what is it? <laughs> Like, you know, it's, it seems odd to um, redevelop a site that no one else is, that someone else may be owning the property of without a commitment for affordable housing and whatnot. Well, this does come with a commitment. So the rezoning includes um, the mapping of a required 25% of any residential floor area to be affordable. So whatever happens on that site, they will be that for sure. Um, and, you know, my understanding can you, clarify, is that. can you clarify who owns the property? Yes, I think. Lisa, do you have that information offhand? I think it's owned by uh, Marathon Petroleum. I mean, it's, it's actually owned by the the um, company, the the gas company. It's uh, not a. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, it's uh, directly owned by a uh, marathon and. Uh, uh, who owns uh what's the name of it speed uh okay. yeah mm -hmm. speedway yeah well uh, others certainly have more experience with the history of this but it, it seems a little odd to me for a developer of an adjacent property to be proposing a rezoning of a property that's not theirs so curious what people in the land use committee have to say and then the other is, is a, a question is that is the you mentioned that you're considering having solar panels on top and energy efficiency of whatever appliance, which is kind of the bare minimum, but does this not follow under the current city council guidelines of requiring solar or green roof on top of the building? Yes, it does. That is the new local law that was passed, I think, two years ago. So, okay, so yes, you're not, it's you're, not considering, either... you're not considering doing that. You have to do that. Definitely doing that. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. That's it. Jan Peterson. Yeah, since I can see, I live in the middle of this whole thing. And uh, Frank, you're there. 
I think are, has there been really a good meeting with all the people that live that are going to be totally affected by this major development process going on? I mean, this is right in the middle of Breck, and I don't know. Uh, maybe I missed it, but I haven't seen that there's been a, a, a meeting with all the people that live within this five block radius. Is I don't. I, yeah, no, I'm here. I, there has not been a collective meeting. This this came to St. Nick's very recently. This wasn't so, so really this a, a good idea, though. But can we have a meeting on this? This is a pretty. A lot of stuff being thrown out that uh, there's many questions around besides all the gas pipes and everything else that's going on in that area. I think we need an intense look uh, with the people that are, live on those blocks. Sure, Ms. Peterson, we're happy to to meet with you and your organization or the, the group you're speaking of. So okay. we can, we can follow people up. People that all live, because I know the people that are living near me don't have any idea that all of this they know something has to go on sometime i'm not you know we're in williamsburg we aren't totally dead but i don't think that people are quite well aware of the amount of scale of what is happening other than they hear pounding all the time so that would be very good if we could set up a meeting locally maybe over at at uh, uh st nick's Sure, I'll look to the board to follow up with you directly and get or your at the, our St. Francis Church. We're right there. You know. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sonia, is there any questions in the chat? Oh, I don't see I'm any sorry, more. The other yeah. one I had is that when you I don't, wait, I, I don't I, see I anything in the sorry, I don't have any in the uh, chat or the Q and A's. Okay, uh, thank you. But wait, but I I Del Teague, I have another question. Um uh, two two things. First of all, if you're going to have a meeting, then please try to let the land use committee know the results of that meeting before June 28th, because we're having our committee on June 20, June 28th. And second of all, I, uh, um, Willis, I don't understand what your question was about the uh, gas station. I, I, the question is, is, it, is, is there an example or is this common practice? This is a developer led rezoning proposal and they're also proposing to rezone a property that is not theirs so i don't really fully understand how that property owner fits into this or seeks to benefit from a rezoning that they're not part of the application for so i think lisa do you want to address the land use rationale and city planning's review of the district we're proposing yeah this is a very important question actually yes it does happen actually quite frequently um, it's not done with no awareness of the property owner. There's definitely consultation of the neighboring property owner. Um, but Lisa, I'll let, I think you're best position to answer the question. <laughs> and I had my hand up about the question of the parks that you're saying that the outdoor space that are. Sorry, you're muted, Lisa. I don't think you're aware of that. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to the outdoor space in just one second. Okay. Thank you. Lisa was trying to say something. She seems like she's muted. I don't know what's going on. So we need to know what what's the situation with the property owner. Has this property owner been consulted? Has the property owner uh, been given a chance to object to the rezoning of its property? Yes, they have been consulted and they don't want to sell the property. Um, you know, they're, they're, they have no intention of changing the use from a gas station. I think Mr. Kabuski mentioned that it's owned by the petroleum company, which intends to continue the use um, that's existing there of the gas station. Um, and so they did not object to the, the district and the rezoning. So, so will they be permitted to continue? There, will they be permitted to continue with their gas station, even if this application is granted? Yes, yes, it would be it would be continued to be existing under the current CFO that they have. Um, if they wanted to make changes or something of that nature, um, it would be they would have to uh, be a non-compliant use, but it, it's allowed to continue under its existing use. 
do you have um, any anything in writing from them that they do not oppose this? I don't have anything in writing, but they were consulted and um, you know, this was discussed with them before we went forward with this. As is common practice, so it is actually common practice that other property owners are um, properties rezoned by, you know, other individuals and that's part of the land use rationale here, as Lisa explained earlier with uh, the district and the shape of the district. And so it is actually a common practice. Okay, uh, Jan, you had, you had another question? You're muted. The public space that you, you said quickly, because everybody knows that Williamsburg does not have enough open space, public space, recreational space. And you said that there are two places on different floors of the building. What does that mean? Um, it's open space for the, the building. So it's creating outdoor recreational space. Um, if you want to go back, Lisa, to the other slide, I think you can hear us, but we can't hear you, unfortunately, at this time. Um, but we do have an image of it. It's basically over the first floor commercial um, space which covers the entire lot would be um, an outdoor recreational space. But for the people in the building, not for the neighborhood, right? Correct. Correct. It's, it's recreation. Both recreation spaces are for the access of the tenants, uh -huh. the residents. One is in the rear of the building and the other is on the top uh, on the seventh floor and it overlooks Metropolitan and the side. Okay, uh, Santa Michelli. Right. Uh, good evening. Just uh, just a question. Um, uh, did you have a chance to reach out uh, to the resident of the smaller scale building on DeVos Street, which you're gonna have to share somehow the backyard? I don't know. I can see from your image exactly, but definitely those are small uh, building, uh, most likely 19th century. Uh, many are still frame out, so there is some structural vulnerability uh, of this building. Uh, so I was curious if you did do outreach to each one of these buildings on the ball. Also, Metropolitan from across the street, we still have a smaller scale, two family, three family houses, uh, on, technically on Orient, which is led into Metropolitan Avenue. So mm -hmm. this other question, have you done reach out to this specific uh, owner of this building or these houses? And uh, and then you know I see that uh, your rendering indicates uh, another supermarket. Uh, we had the other building at the opposite corner of Metropolitan Avenue. Now it's a supermarket. For years it was empty. So is that what you envision? Another supermarket uh, across the street because we have several of them. What would be the alternative in in regard to uh, to economic development, to potential business that could uh, go there? Did you envision a smaller scale uh, retail that potentially could uh, uh, even serve the community on a more diverse uh, uh, way than uh, once again at uh, five supermarket within 500 feet? So, yeah, yeah, regarding the commercial space, I'm sorry, were you finished asking the question? Um, yeah, for now, yes. So, if you can answer <laughs> the question I have asked. Sure. The first question about outreach um, we haven't done individual door knocking to every neighbor, but we certainly will do that before the construction would begin um, and can reach to any specific folks that you're thinking of there. But um, regarding the commercial, uh, that is not determined yet. It's really an illustrative concept with, you know, this, this rendering has an idea, right? This is a few years off at least that the construction would be completed and the space would be ready for lease up. So in this retail environment, it's pretty uncertain what um, is going to be the best fit there. So we're eager to hear what you think about what's the right use for that commercial space. It could be broken up into two or three very small spaces, right? I mean, it's about 7,000 square feet. So, you know, if you guys have input and suggestions, we're eager to hear what you think is the right fit for the neighborhood there. Um, what, what's, the size, what's the size of the ground floor uh, retail space? The entire? I believe it's about 7,000. 7,000, 7, okay. Uh, honestly, uh, as a community member, uh, I will feel personally uncomfortable uh, just what you have stated before construction began. I believe uh, outreach uh, uh, should be done 
to the smaller scale building on the Wall Street, especially to understand how is the community receiving uh, once again an out of development which can have impact, both physical impact on the structure of this building, both other impact of which the neighbor, they may definitely feel uh, impacted by. So this before, not before construction, before approval of this proposal and before coming, I believe- to Santo, our... this is a question disguised as a short story. Sure, okay, that's all, thank you. Uh, uh, Del Teague here again, let me just also agree that if you're gonna do outreach and you want it to be of any help to you, you need to do it before we have our committee meeting on June 28th, or we will be reviewing it as a project where you did not do outreach. Oh, I have to say. Are there any other questions? Boy. Man, share my speak. Pardon me? William Vega, may I speak? Yes. Yeah, I just want to agree with Sante is that you got a supermarket on Graham and Metropolitan C Town that's been well established, and then just open a new one on Brooklyn Harvest on Metropolitan and Humble. And that one is struggling. So not a supermarket within a block or two away from that. It will shut down the supermarket. So please really evaluate that's what was the Bible. We don't need to open up a supermarket and have another one closed. That's we all. You. Thank you. Thank you for that. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much, Ms. George. Have a good evening. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is citywide uh, hotel tax amendment. Uh, Alexandria. Yes. Hello, Madam Chair. Thank you for allowing us to present tonight. Um, I don't have capabilities to share my screen. Would that be um, granted to us so we can share uh, the presentation? Do you have it now? I just received it. I'm going to share my screen. My computer is a little slow. I hope uh, you're now looking at my screen. Um, so tonight uh, we're presenting to you um, three citywide tax amendments. Uh, the first one is a citywide hotel special permit. With me today, uh, we have Jonah Rogoff. Uh, he is also a part of the project team and an expert. So in case that you have technical questions about um, this proposal, he's available to answer any questions. This project is a zoning tax amendment that will create a new special permit for hotel development across the city. The goal is to create a consistent framework for hotel development and ensure new hotels do not negatively impact or affect their surrounding area. Before the pandemic hit, New York City experienced record growth in the tourism industry and its hotel pipeline for the 10th consecutive year. Visitors trends peak in 2019 with almost 67 million visitors, up from 46 million in 2009. Visitor count was forecast to increase even more in 2020. Furthermore, sizable growth of hotel room supply has been a prevailing factor in NYC for more for much of the past decade. Between 2008 and 2019, the total number of hotel rooms in New York City market grew from just over 80,000 to over 127,800 in the past years. It also saw an increase of the 40% in the hotel inventory. Despite all this increase in the hotel room supply, demand also continued to rise, keeping the annual occupancy at almost 87%. These rates are among the highest on any urban area within um, the United States. This rapid growth of hotels throughout the city has led concerns uh, on the surrounding uses. A variety of special districts 
have been adopted as um, a special permit, have adopted a special permits. Notably, you might uh, remember that in 2018, a special permit was adopted for M1 districts, for manufacturing one districts, to address conflicts between the hotels and the operations of the industrial businesses. The proposed tax amendment. Um, my apologies. My computer is a little crazy today. Uh, the proposed tax amendment will create a consistent zoning framework for new hotels and allow the city planning commission to evaluate each hotel development impact on the future use and development of the surrounding area. While it is important that if hotels continue to locate throughout the city to support a vibrant tourism economy and meet the diverse needs of the residents and the businesses, the pace and patterns of the development driven by the record high visitation has created conflicts with adjacent uses and overwhelms some communities. It is also important to know that this proposal um, is only proposing a special permit. It doesn't procure hotel development. What it entails is that all future hotels, we need to ask for this special permit to be able to develop. It requires that the city planning commission assess the appropriateness of that development based on the future use and the surrounding area. It keeps going to that first one. My apologies for that. So the new special permit uh, will be applicable in higher density commercial areas and districts, mixed use districts, and pair with and mixed use districts that pair M1 and residential districts where there's no special permit today. This new special permit will be applicable to those areas that already have the special permits, such as the M1 districts. Um, those ones will retain it uh, along with the new areas that it will be applicable. Because of the significant impacts that the pandemic is having on the hotel industry, we have created several provisions to minimize the likelihood that the special permit will impair in the recovery, recovery of the hotel industry. So this includes modifying the vesting provisions to facilitate projects that are already on the pipeline, approve CPC and BESA applications will not require a special permit, if these applications were approved after January 1st, 2018, applications that begin CPC public review or are filed with BSA prior to adoption of this proposal will not require a special permit. And finally, there is an extended discontinuous provision allowing vacant hotels extra time to return to transient use. Um, Provisions uh, for to retain their use up to six years are also included. Um, in terms of applicability, here we have it included in the deck. Um, all the areas are now in gray. As you see in the map, are where right now currently a special permit is needed to develop a hotel. And with this project that we're presenting to you today. We're adding all the areas that are highlighted in pink. Um, a special permit will be required if a hotel wants to be developed. Um, going to live there, uh, the project was uh, referred by the City Planning Commission on May 3rd to all community boards and board of presidents. And the clock for the community board to share any comments or votes regarding this project um, will conclude in mid-July. Um, we're here today to answer any questions, and if our questions that we're, we're not able to answer today, we we'll are very happy to follow up through an email or to um, a secondary or extended presentation to the Land Use Committee meeting if, if needed. That concludes my presentation. This one, <laughs> one of three. Okay, um, thank you, Steve Chester.
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks for the presentation, Alexandra. Um, yeah, if, I wonder if you could expand on how I feel like this um, citywide permit would help the hotel industry come out of the uh, you know the pandemic pandemic economic uh, devastation. Um, if they're having a problem, you know, huge problem filling vacant rooms right now, creating more stock seems like that would exasperate the problem, not uh, make it better. But uh, maybe you could explain. Yeah. Um, Jenna, would you like to address that question? Sure. Thanks, Alexandra. Uh, that's a great question, Steve. I, I would say that when we were developing the proposal, which preceded the pandemic, uh, while we were in the pandemic, we added the period of discontinuance. Uh, so the purpose of the to allow six years after the adoption of the text uh, is to allow hotels to uh, recover the ones that are uh, both in the pipeline of DOB projects and those that are um, uh, may have to close temporarily and can reopen within those six years. So we, we uh, tried to strike a balance where uh, we think it's appropriate to uh, regulate and um, have a site specific approval for hotels. Um, that doesn't mean that we're not, we're trying to prevent their development. We just wanna add that site specific approval um, while allowing some flexibility uh, given the, the need for economic recovery. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I don't see any hands. Rob Solano. Um, excellent uh, presentation. Um, would, would it be the presentation you're presenting is, um, and it just hotels will be have, have to come back to a, another process to identify that they're coming into our neighborhoods and what they're going to be doing in the neighborhoods. Is that a fair assessment? Exactly. So uh, after, if the project is adopted during the fall, um, every hotel development um, that happens, for example, in community district one, will need to ask for a special permit and special permits within our standing resolution entail a full builder review. Um, so after all the land use application of our mental review is conducted, City Planning Commission will certify the project and then it will come to the community board, to the board of president, city planning commission, and then to city council. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, we've been asking for that for a while now. So I appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Are there any other questions? Thank you so much for your presentation. I don't see any members here. Pardon me? Does somebody want to say something? Sorry, I don't see any other question. I'm sorry in the chat. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is a present is a fresh update non eula item. Citywide mm -hmm. tax amendment to expand the fresh uh, program. Also, uh, Alexandra, okay. I figure, you know, don't drop in my screen will be easier <laughs> for the night. Uh, in this case, uh, along with me, I also have here Jesse Hirakawa, who is part of the team that developed this project in case there are like clinical questions that need to be answered today. So the Department is of City Planning is proposing a zoning tax amendment. We are calling it Fresh 2 to update the existing full retail expansion to support health program, which is called Fresh. Under um, the zoning resolution 63 that provides greater incentives for neighborhood grocery stores to look to be located in underserved neighborhoods throughout the city. So the purpose just to recap the purpose of fresh it incentivizes the construction of supermarkets in underserved areas of the city it increases access 
it, it aims to increase accessibility to fresh food and it encourages better access to foods built in healthier neighborhoods. The part of the existing project includes zoning and discretionary tax incentives, um, zoning only zoning incentive areas or discretionary tax incentive areas. Um, you can see now in this map currently uh, the areas in green are the community districts or areas of community districts where right now the project is applicable and for the zoning incentives. So a little bit of background, but I am going to run through this quickly because uh, I, I think um, you have a, a very challenging agenda. This, this presentation is a little bit uh, longer than others. First combines a package of financial and zoning incentive, and it was created in 2009 to encourage the construction of supermarkets. So in terms of the zoning incentive that are included um, within uh, the program that are approved through a certification by the chair of the city planning commission is, for example, additional FAR in mixed use buildings and additional square footage of residential floor area may be permitted based on the provision of a fresh store. Um, the, the regulations within the M1 districts are modified to allow supermarkets up to 30,000 square feet, and there's additional heights. Um, additional height is also uh, uh, available uh, through a CPC authorization to increase the maximal height of a building if a supermarket is provided on the ground floor. Um, others and incentives include reductions on the required parking. So after the, since the project, since this program uh, has been running for the past 10 years, it was time for make some provisions uh, in, and to see what could be um, enhanced or modified uh, for the project to be better and to achieve uh, better outcomes. So after doing an analysis of the supermarket landscape across New York City in 2018, um, that analysis showed that many neighborhoods remain underserved by fresh food stores. So the, this project is aiming to expand the fresh program to encourage the development and retention of convening accessible stores that provide a full range of grocery products to provide more options that could result in reduction of grocery costs and empower consumers with increased convenience and access to grocery shopping. So part of the, of the modifications that were presented to you and uh, that we want uh, for them to be adopted uh, are as follows. The expansion of the fresh boundary to add additional community streets and areas of the city where this program will be applicable to prevent the saturation of supermarkets within those fresh boundaries, to modify the glazing requirements for conversions, to modify the parking requirements, and to do some minor text cleanups that every we take opportunities to do that every once in a while. So first to tackle the, to explain the expansion of the FRESH program, based on that updated, uh, the supermarket uh, needs index and the land use, and based also on the land use policy goals, DCP is proposing to expand the FRESH program in areas of the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens and Staten Island, where a lack of access to healthy fresh food have been demonstrated. And that includes a portion of community district map one, as it is shown um, on the map um, in the hatch area in Tokos. And here we are zooming into community district one, and you can see um, the areas that um, we're proposing for the project to be expanded within your community. The second um, item that we are adding as part of the FRESH program is 
that we want to prevent saturation of the fresh supermarkets. Uh, since the adoption of the fresh program, we have seen that there are some areas of the city that there's a lot of concentration of supermarkets. As, as you were discussing in the point before, sometimes uh, we want to make sure that we're not located in too many supermarkets within the same bank avenue or within the same street if it is not needed or if the density will not support it. So uh, the proposal will require an evaluation of the amount of supermarkets in the area and the appropriateness of new ones. And the other updates, as mentioned, uh, as part of the FRESH program, um, when a developer is presents a project that wants to uh, wants to provide the FRESH supermarket and wants to, uh, it's asking for either the tax or the zoning incentive, we evaluate the project. And part of the requirements is um, the, the requirements for amount of glazing, the reductions of parking. We also evaluate the floor plans. Um, so because of that experience, we're proposing some changes on the window installation requirements and glazing. Um, we're updating the parking requirements and some other zoning clarifications that we have seen that uh, in the applications that we have been processing, they have become confusing or we want them uh, to be be more clear uh, from now on. In terms of project timeline, uh, this one is uh, slightly a few weeks after uh, the hotels, but similar to the next one that I'm going to present, this project was um, referred to all community boards and borough presidents um, by on May 17th. And um, soon after the, the clock started for community boards and board presidents to share their comments and if they want also their votes and recommendations. Um, and we are aiming for a city planning commission vote by the fall and a winter adoption. That concludes my presentation. And I, I didn't mention it before, but uh, we share these three decks um, with the board. So um, these are all available to you. Happy to answer now any questions. The, the deck also includes several links that are very interesting. They will redirect you to our website to dive more into um, the details of this program. Thank you. Are there any questions? I don't see any hands up. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, two questions really quick. Um, if a, a, if a, a property owner wants to take advantage of this program, is that do they need to acquire a special permit and go through, you know, the community board and city planning, or is it they work directly with city planning? And the second question is is about enforcement. If a developer, you know, they're granted the additional FAR to um, include a supermarket in their building and they don't tenant. A, a supermarket um, vendor and it's just empty or um, is there means to um, you know, to enforce the rule? Yeah, um, on the first one, um, so part, part of the zoning incentive, we, we have either certification or authorization. So the certification, um, it's by the chairperson and the policy that we have in the in the department is that uh, regardless that only requires her approval um she uh, she or him always refers um the project to a community board for 45 days and it comes back and and what i have seen from experience is that the comments that the community board provides are well taken by the city planning commission and the man chair um, and and that is only for a certification for authorization. That is when they want to ask for more height or more FAR based on the provision of the supermarket. That entails um, a user process that includes uh, the community board. Thank you. I'm and, sorry, and the second uh, question yes, sorry, Mr. that you were just so, uh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't I didn't answer the second question very quickly. You asked about Hello, Alexandra. Excuse oh. me, Alexandra. 
the Sorry. person you're with, yes. Jesse, he wanted to speak. I said he was muted. He said, Jesse. Oh, yes, Jesse. Yes, okay. Jesse, do you want to add something that I, that I just said, or can I go to the second one? He's muted. Yeah. He's standing, he can speak. Can okay, I'm going to mute his song phone, please. I'm going to oh, answer. Oh. Uh, Jesse, yes. Do you want to add something? Oh, no. Go for it. I was just saying, just in case I needed to speak, I didn't have a way to unmute myself. But if you go, Great. go for it. Thank okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. And for the second question about the tenancy, that's a very interesting question. Um, we are encountering um, um, one project like that right now in another community district where. Um, they ask for the certification and they use the extra high tip. Um, because of the market and COVID, um, they have been having a hard time retaining a supermarket operator. So as part of the restrictive declarations that are part of, of, of these projects, there is an amount, a period of time that they can ask for extension of the for them to to habitate that space uh, until the supermarket is in operation or is in that space uh, the ceo the ceo of the of the far in use will not be granted uh, but there are provisions for them to ask for more time uh, to look for that supermarket operator um, the other thing is that both uh, city planning and edc are in constant communication with um, the the you know the the developers that are connected to this project. So, in case that they are having problems in locating a supermarket, we also provide um, some assistance um, to you know better connect them to the network of operators and and make sure that that space gets habitated and mm -hmm. used. Thank you. And we also, and the last thing is that we also, um, if there's a certain time when like we reach out, if they haven't reached out to make sure that the space of being, it's being used by a super, as a supermarket. And they okay. need to provide proof of that. I, mm -hmm. I would yes. just add on to Alexandra, thank you. Um, yeah, just emphasizing that there is a legal document that is, you know, tied with the application and it's tied to the development of the first floor retail, like of that said fresh grocery store. And yeah, it's directly tied to the residential floor area um, as long as it's in existence of the supermarket. And um, yeah, we actually do the, um, so the permanence of that grocery store is important for the stability of those residential units, right? And so we actually go through a process every three to four years where there is that they have to, and it's in the zoning resolution um, where every three to four years they have to prove um, that the, the, the grocery store is in fact still functioning as originally um, stated. That's great. It's too bad you can't do that with community facilities. <laughs> Simon, do you hear me? Yes. Oh, Go I ahead, can I uh, ask a question? Yes. Yeah, my question is, if there's an if there's an old, an old an old building, I would like to add floor area. Uh, could they still take advantage if they uh, of this program? If they want to uh, green, um, you know, this uh, initiative, could they add floor area to the top of the building and use, you know, take advantage of this program? Jesse, would you like to answer that question? Sure, yeah. Um, in sure. terms of uh, an old building, are you saying like a warehouse a or are you kind like of Like a saying, conversion. Like, yeah. Uh, right, yeah. I mean, any old building, um, the most take clear. Yeah, um, and you know, under whatever the building is under the existing zoning, you, yeah, you can retrofit it. And as long as you put, as long as you're providing an approved, the grocery store and it's an approved uh, floor plan, and however much um, square footage they're providing, um, as long as it's hitting the minimum requirements. Um, and there's a maximum of, I think it's like 20,000 square feet for a grocery store, then that's how much um, residential FAR, additional residential FAR they will be allowed. Um, but in terms of kind of bulk and height, as long as it's following the underlying zoning, um, it, it, it can fit within that envelope. Unless of course you're going for that additional height authorization, but um, the answer is yes. Thank you. 
Michele. Santa uh, Michele. Yes, good evening. Yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, just a couple of questions uh, that they feel to me a little bit in contrast with the need of the CD. Like, for example, I see one incentive is reduction in required parking, which uh, I believe uh, parking will always be required today, even in light of a supermarket, which will bring a certain commercial activity. So I don't know, I just see that point in, in contrast with a, a major need. And also something else again is a additional of heights and uh, an FAR, uh, which I understand, but I believe a community many times have been battling against uh, the issue of increased floor space, increased height. So I feel that this is something that always can turn beneficial, yes, to the community, because we have a supermarket in place where there wasn't, but definitely to the developer. Um, so yeah, Do, does it have to be this way necessarily? Um, with respect to the latter one, uh, it's a provision that we have had uh, from the beginning of the program, but it's it's both ways. Either it's um, the it's either the certification just makes sure that the area that you're providing a supermarket, it's also used on the top to provide residential units so you you're not losing residential units the provision of residential units because you're getting the supermarket and the authorization that allows you to re, to use more far is the one that um it requires like if they they want to be for example they want to build a bigger building for some other reason and and they are using part of the supermarket to reach that amount of extra units. So they're, they're both things that the relocation both both to add. And I think this is part of the how the project has been conceived from the very beginning um, to make sure that while we are incentivizing at uh, the location of a supermarket, we, we are not disincentivizing the construction of new residential units. We usually see this also pair with rezoning that that um, they're asking, for example, for MIH or they're in areas that are um, um, where MIH is mapped. So uh, a lot of the times that I have with the same projects like this, part of those units are affordable, uh, but not all the cases, right? Uh, but I hear you in the concern that uh, it feels, uh, which I think you also mentioned when we were discussing zoning for accessibility, that it's kind of like we're giving this incentive for developers, but why why we need to give them that much? And I think that it's part of the package of making sure we're getting all the things that the city needs and not using one in exchange of the other. And the same is with parking. Um, uh, I hear you on the need of of parking. I think uh, one what I have heard is also that. Uh, sometimes part construct building parking is so expensive that it precludes uh, certain developments. And we didn't want that to happen, especially with this update on lower density residential districts from uh, R3 to R5. So the construction of supermarket on top of the provision of all the parking spaces will preclude um, the provision of, of grocery stores that are so needed in the neighborhood. So it's sort of a, a trade off. And, and, and this is um, the proposal as it sits now. What, what I invite is like if the board would like to make that recommendation or that comment to include it on the letter, and we will do the uh, communicate and share with uh, the chair in the city planning commission. Yeah, if I, if I can make a, a brief comment also to what you have said, in light of many urbanistic change have been happening globally, internationally, in Europe a lot, open street, uh, super blocks, uh, many other uh, urbanistic initiatives. One thing that many countries like in Holland, they have done it, even in light of open street, for example, they actually have been building parking place, parking uh, underground 
parking space. This is something we never speak about. I believe this, uh, mm -hmm. this is something that city planning should start considering because we have increased density, we increase population tremendously, and, and definitely community remains always affected you know, by pollution, by traffic. The cars are not going to go away tomorrow. And few people that are going to benefit uh, any way of the development, they will afford certain, uh, they will have certain financial capability to afford parking space, but it's going to remain another portion of the community that may need it. And definitely traffic will always be an issue. So my invitation is really to evaluate uh, parking space, not disregarded because the supermarket is beneficial. They both need to assist and coexist. That's all. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, Marty Needleman. Okay, Marty. Um, what, uh, in terms of the affordability of the apartments, what are we talking about? And have you evaluated uh, the impact on the surrounding area in terms of uh, eliminating or causing pr pressures to eliminate existing uh, affordable housing? Um, this this proposal doesn't include any affordable housing provision. It's just the supermarket um, incentives. Um, I mentioned the affordability one uh, as an example of one type of project that we have seen. But this this project doesn't include any of that. Are there any other questions? Why Thank you, Alexander. The next item on the agenda is health and fitness citywide tax amendment. Amendment, Alexandra. Yes. Um, last one uh, tonight. Um, this is uh, also a citywide tax amendment that looks to reduce the barriers barriers for jeans, spas, and licenses massage to be uh, provided for the city. So, health and fitness facilities include a range of activities that are, we are all very aware of, larger commercial gyms, um, that including chains like Blink and Platinum Fitness, smaller studios such as like martial arts, yoga, aerobics, um, but this also encompass um, a range of therapeutic and wellness businesses such as spas and licensed massage therapy. So right now, a special permit is required to open these businesses almost everywhere in New York City. This has this have, hasn't changed a lot in the past four decades since the special permit was created. In addition to the significant growth of health and fitness industry and the desire for communities to access these amenities, regulations around massage therapies also have changed. So now massage therapists are licensed health professionals by the NYS Education Department and are and a register of all licensed massage therapists is publicly available online. But despite all of this um, and the value that they may have in the neighborhoods, our zoning creates a major regulatory barrier for these small businesses to be provided throughout the city. So, because of this and, the, and how uniquely uh, this is uh, written in the zoning resolution, uh, we are proposing to remove the BSA permit uh, that for all gyms, spas, and lessons, such as therapists, uh, which is referred now in the zoning resolution as physical, cultural, or health establishment. Basically, a small gyms and spas will be treated similarly to any other range of local amenities, such as rock stores, restaurants, or salons. Um, classifying the Sunday Resolution as Use Group 6. Um, and their large gyms and spas will be treated similarly to back and banquet halls, music studios, and car showrooms, and will be classified in our Sunday Resolution as uh, Use Group 9. So now, if this project is adopted and the city uh, wide tax amendment is adopted, uh, these uses will become, by removing the BSA special permit, these uses could become as of right. 
to remove this special uh, this BSA special permit also includes the licensed massage, massage therapies that are class that will be now be classified as all ambulatory healthcare uses within use groups for A and 6B and they're permissible in most residential districts and all commercial and manufacturing districts. When BSA reviews this type of applications for gyms, they occasionally impose some conditions to address community concerns about noise and vibration that can result from these activities, such as dropping weight or using exercise equipment in unison. So to continue to address those concerns, the proposal will also include additional performance standards for noise and vibration. A subset of higher impact gyms will need to have an acoustical engineer certified with the Department of Buildings that the facility is designed to meet these performance standards before they receive the certificate of occupancy. These provisions will apply in mixed use buildings in commercial and NX uh, districts. In lower impact facilities such as yoga, isometric exercise, and therapeutic services such as PASS will not need to demonstrate the compliance uh, with this noise and vibration performance, but they will still be subject to the NYC noise code. So basically, the citywide tax amendment removes the BSA special permit uh, for these establishments to become as of right, but introduces uh, some performance standards to make sure that those revisions that the BSA does are well included in the zoning resolution and part of um, the regulations that DOB makes sure uh, when they review this type of developments. Um, I have added here the proposed changes. Uh, this on orange, we can see um, these are the areas where currently the special permit is required for this type of facilities to be developed. And these are the areas that this special permit then by removing it, all this, all this area is where uh, this type of facilities will be able to develop as of right. And adding some areas that, um, which are basically commercial overlays that um, right now, not even with a special permit, these type of facilities were allowed, and by this uh, citywide tax amendment, um, they will be allowed. That concludes my presentation. Uh, we're Jesse and I happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? None of my end, Madam Chair. Thank you. Well, it look like we have no questions, Alexander. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair. And please do let us know if you want us to present this again, uh, either show presentation or the, the longest presentation on the Land Use Committee. Or if you have any other questions, um, we are available for more people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You too. Um, next item on the agenda is New York City Commission on Human Rights. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Francisco Leopold. I work for the New York City Commission on Human Rights. Um, with me tonight is my colleague, Sam Yang, who will a short presentation and some of the accommodations that are offered by the commission for all New Yorkers. But because of time, I don't want to go too much into it. I'm hoping and looking forward that we could come back another time where we can give an intensive um, presentation as to all the areas that the commission um, covers. Um, so now I will pass it over to Sam and then he will do a presentation. And thank you so much for having us here tonight. You're welcome. Um, thank you, Coming Bowl One, for having us tonight. Um, again, my name is Sam Yang. I am the housing liaison with the New York City Commission Human Rights. Um, I, tonight, you know, I'm just going to talk briefly about some of the protections when it comes to housing under the Title VIII Human Rights Law. 
Um, so first things first, the New York City Commission Human Rights, we enforce the New York City Human Rights Law, um, which is also known as the Anti-Discrimination Law of New York City um, in areas of employment, public accommodation, housing, discriminatory harassment, and bias-based program by law enforcement. Um, individuals cannot be unfairly treated, mistreated because of their identity. Um, and when we say identity, we are talking about what makes each of us special, what makes each of us unique. Um, so for example, you know, our age, our race, our national origin, our immigration status, um, our marital status, right? Are we single? Are we married? Um, do we have kids? Um, so in housing, there are 17 of these protected categories. Now, um, the commission has many departments. Um, two of the main ones is the Community Relations Bureau, which does a lot of the educational work. Um, and we also have a law enforcement bureau, which have attorneys which do investigate any claims of discrimination. So for example, in housing, if someone has been unfairly treated in housing, um, they look for an apartment, but they were denied the apartment because of their age, um, they can file complaints with the Commission of Human Rights. The Commission of Human Rights Law Enforcement Bureau will then investigate those complaints. And if there is a plausible cause of discrimination, we can then go and sue the, um, the person who violated the law. Um, we are a city agency. So one of the great things about us is that we're free. Um, you know, whether you want to file a complaint with us, whether you want to ask questions, um, you know, do get in touch with us. We are free. There is no cost to use our services. So just to talk a bit more about housing. So um, there are many housing cases that we do take. Um, two of the main ones, well, one of them is actually lawful source of income. So lawful source of income is any type of federal government or local um, housing assistance, such as housing vouchers, right? So Section 8, City FEP, um, PASA, those are all housing vouchers and they fall under lawful source of income. Other lawful source of income includes SSI, um, the you know, HRA rental assistance, as well as the you know, one shot deal or the new, or the new um, emergency rent assistance program. Those are all under lawful source of income as well. And what this means is that if someone is using a voucher, or if someone is applying for assistance with rent, landlords cannot discriminate. Landlords cannot say, we don't want to take these vouchers. Landlords cannot say, I don't want to work with this client, this tenant, to apply for that one shot deal. So, for example, um, one of the requirements of the ERAT, the Emer uh, Emergency Rental Assistance Program, is that tenants must have proof of rental payment. Tenants must show that they have a lease or they and, yeah. pay rent. Okay. So, as, as the as Susanna Susanna Abbas no a meeting in no a meeting was. Um. So you know, if a landlord says, "Oh, you know, I don't want to give you a lease," or a landlord says, "I don't want to." write any type of statement showing that you are a tenant here or you pay rent to me, that could actually be a violation of the human rights law based on lawful source of income. Now, there are some unlawful practices in housing that we have seen a lot. Um, one example of unlawful practices in housing is setting different terms, conditions, or privileges for the sale, rental, or leasing of housing. How does that look like? Well, that looks like, you know, if someone is finding an apartment, but because of their age, they're young adults, right? They're 18 years old, they're going to college. Um, the broker is saying, oh, you gotta take double the security deposit because you're young adults, you tend to have more parties, right? So that's, that's why we have to charge you a uh, higher security deposit, or we have to charge you a higher rent. That is actually illegal in New York City. The idea that someone is a young adult or the idea, the assumption that someone might, you know, cause more damage because of the identity is actually illegal. Now, other forms of discrimination would be that, you know, if someone has a disability, and when we say disability, we mean any type of, you know, medical, mental, psychological, or physical impairment or history of impairment is considered a disability. They have the right for reasonable accommodation and housing. And this is very important, right? Um, the reason why we have this provision is well, the reason why this exists is that we want to make sure that if someone has a disability, they still have meaningful access and to enjoy the unit. So 
for example, if someone is using a wheelchair, reasonable accommodation and housing would be asking for a rent to be built. Someone has with back problems, reasonable accommodation could be, you know, um, installing a wall oven so they don't have to bend down to use the oven. Um, if someone has, you know, arthritis in the wrist, reasonable accommodation would be changing their the doorknob to a door handle so they have easier access into their apartment unit. Um, one thing to note is that under the city's human rights law, the landlord must pay for that accommodation. So if I need a ramp, if I need a bath and grab bar, if I need a, a stove that is of a certain height, if I need to lower the cabinets, I need a cut in my bathtub, the landlord must pay for that accommodation. The landlord cannot pass that cost on to me. So who can be held liable when we talk about discrimination? Well, obviously, right, the landlord. The landlord can be held liable. The superintendent can also be held liable. If the superintendent made any type of the arbitrary comments to the tenant, if the superintendent make any type of sexual remarks uh, or racist remarks, the superintendent can be held liable. Um, the rental and the managing agents, right, whoever is helping you find an apartment, if they discriminate it, they could be held liable. Um, in fact, today, there was an individual who had a voucher where the broker told them, oh, this apartment unit doesn't take vouchers, right? In that premise, um, the broker who was shown the apartment unit who made that comment, as well as the landlord, can be held liable under the New York City Human Rights Law. Uh, newspapers, if a newspaper print or post anything discriminatory, they can also be held liable. Landing institutions, insurance companies, and appraisers when it comes to buying a house. Now, one of the main reasons why we tell people to file a complaint with the Commission of Human Rights is that, you know, not only by filing complaints are you helping yourself, but you're also helping your community members. Um, when you let the Commission of Human Rights know discrimination, let us know what is going on in housing, the Commission of Human Rights can then, you know, we file a lawsuit, file, investigate these complaints. We are then able to pr prevent that from happening again in the future. Now, um, at the same time, the person who did file a complaint, they are protected. Um, if a landlord retaliated against that person who, you know, opposed discrimination, filed a complaint, will assist in the complaint, um, that landlord can then be held double. So, some civil remedies and penalties, right? Um, some of the protections, well, some of the things that the commission can do is that we can actually impose penalties to those landlords, to the brokers, to the managing agents. Um, we could impose $125,000 or up to $250,000 in civil penalties if someone did discriminate it. So if a landlord says, oh, I don't want to rent to you because you have too many kids. Oh, I don't want to rent to you because, you know, of your race. Um, could be subtle or unsubtle, uh, unsubtle, right? Um, that landlord can then be held up to $250,000, can hold up to, you know, $250,000 in civil penalties. Um, this does not include any type of compensatory damages or other type of emotional damages that the complainant, the person who contacted the commission, can receive. Now, like any other city agency, the best way to get in touch with us is by calling 311. Um, ask to speak with the Commission Human Rights. We don't care about immigration status. So if someone does not have immigration status, do not worry. Give us a call. Don't worry about it. Um, if someone doesn't speak English, that's fine. Give us a call. Um, as we speak of the Commission of Human Rights, we speak 30 different languages at our agency. So even if we don't have the language, we will always have an uh, interpreter available to assist. Um, and of course, you know, again, I always want to mention that we are a free service. You know, don't be afraid to use us. Um, if you are African looking for housing, you think you were discriminated, let us know. If you're a landlord and you want to rent out a spare bedroom, you rent out your apartment, contact us. Let us know before you do any type of advertisement, right? The last thing we want to do is that we don't want to have to file complaints on a, a landlord, you know, like a small mom and like a small family household because they want to rent out a spare unit in the household, right? Um, let us know, call us. Um, that way we're able to answer some questions that you might have. And I don't, friends, do you have anything you want to add? I, I think that you covered the only thing I, I as I said before, is that um, because we still have to cover 
um, employment and you know so many other areas of accommodation that we we want to cover, but because of the time we don't have to. So I'm looking forward that um, maybe in the future that we could come back and have a um, longer time that we can um, give a more extensive presentation. But I just want to say thanks to the board for allowing us to be here. And um, thank you. And if anyone have any questions, please go ahead and ask any questions that you may have. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Elkins, do you have your hand up or you never took it down? Um, Elkins, is your hand up or you never took it down? No, I'll take it down now. Sorry. Sorry uh, Madam Chair, I have a question. Yes. Sonia. Mr. Yang, yeah. considering a lot of these uh, tax credit and city programs and private investors, they are strict requirements. How does the city handle, like, there are student rules and, you know, a full-time student given um, these tax credit in the past. I've dealt with that and they were screaming like we were discriminating because they were full-time students. They didn't meet the, the guidelines as far as the exception to the rules. How would you handle that and how do the landlord handle that in, in the sense of when you explain a program has certain requirements because it's either privately funded or tax credit or home funds, you know, there are strict restrictions on income household size, et cetera, you know, student status. Right. Um, so the city, the state government, they all have different type of housing assistance programs available. Um, generally speaking, landlords cannot pick and choose which program they want to work with, um, and they can't discriminate on the programs themselves. Um, so when we look at students or when we look at someone that's working, you know, that could fall under one of the identities, which is considered as, um, lawful occupation identity, right? Uh, so the one thing about us is that we are a city agency. So if a housing development is specifically funded by the state or funded by the federal government, in a sense, we would not have jurisdiction over those buildings because we're only a city agency. So we can only handle when it comes to, you know, programs that is funded by the city, um, such as, you know, HPD affordable housing. Um, if someone's discriminated while applying for one of those lottery apartments, then they could file a complaint with the city. Uh, but then, you know, the ones where it's working with the federal government, with the state government, we don't have jurisdictions. Um, we also, if they get specific, I, I don't think it really ex exists in New York City, you know, like there are specific um, housing complexes where they are only meant for students, in a sense. Um, in that case, they, the requirement would be that someone is a student in that instance, but those are really limited. Um, so I, I would like to say, you know, for us with the Commission of Human Rights, we, the housing that we have jurisdiction on is about, I was, it's like 99% of the housing in this well, 95% because there's a few that's not there. So uh, most of them are in our jurisdiction, but if anyone have any questions, if they're not sure about it, just contact us, let us know, and we could look into those. Do you have access to- uh, Also, if, uh, I mean, if anybody, Oh, sorry. I was just going to see if anybody, and you know, if anybody who have had any issues um, with the landlord when they, and with the students in the different areas, just have them go call out the office, and then somebody will, um, will set an appointment, schedule an appointment, and then they, they can um, go over whatever the problems are. Go ahead, Mr. Um, Thank Jim. you. What, what about the housing authority? Do you have any access? Do you have any control over discrimination by the New York City Housing Authority? Yes, so we do have, um, NYCHA is one of our sister agencies. New York City Housing, uh, Housing Authority is one of our sister agencies, and we do have jurisdiction over them. I mean, we get a bunch of reasonable accommodation request cases with NYCHA, which we do work with. Thank you. Any board members want to uh, ask a question, please uh, put the hand up in the lower right-hand corner of the participants page. Jan? Jan, I see your hand up, or you never took it down. I, Is there any? Uh, I was going to speak on the housing authority. You're saying public housing tenants can uh, take a case against the housing authority, and you will help them. Yes. So, um, if someone is in public housing and they were discriminated, they can file complaints with the commission community. Yeah. Can you give us your telephone number in the chat? Put that over. 
so, so I could put in, I'm not sure. Oh, I could put in my email address so everyone can get in contact with me if they have any questions or concerns. Okay, Sam. You want your cell phone, Sam, put it in there. Are, are there any other questions? Are there any questions in the chat, Sonia? No, there isn't any from my end. I'm looking and she was, it was something earlier because I didn't think it's happening to the q and I don't know which presentation uh, with a gentleman there, but I'm not sure which question he was referring to, but not for this one, Madam Chair. Okay, no thank questions. you. Thank you. So, yeah, so for anyone who um, Sam has placed his telephone number as well as his um his email address, he is our um, housing um, liaison person. So he, he does a lot of workshop and a lot of trainings. So if for any reason that you want us to come back and then to have a more intensive um, presentation and to cover other, other areas of discrimination in housing and other areas, feel free to, um, you have my in information, you can send me an email and I will um, get it going. I thank you again for having us. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Next item on the agenda is liquor license. Do we have any speakers on the liquor license? No, then his sign up. There's no sign ups for the liquor license. Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you. Amen. Um, that concludes our um, that concludes our public hearing session. Can we uh, we'll go into our regular board meeting? Can we have a moment of silence? Let's dedicate our moment of silence to families who are losing their lives on, on, on all the violence that's going on in the city and all across the world. Thank you. Can we have the roll call vote, please? Roll call, Jerry. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte. Here, Jerry. Thank you, Lisa. Gina Barros. Here. Tian Brooks. Eric Brusitis. Here. Thank you. Tom Burrows. Here. Thank you. Iris Cabrera. Here. Thank you. Phil Caponegro. Here. Thank you. Frank Carbone. Here. Thank you. Stephen Chesler. Here. Thank you. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Here. Thank you. Aaron Drinkwater. Here. Thank you. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Here. Thank you. Julia Amanda Foster. Here. Thank you. Chairperson Fuller. Here. Thank you. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yep. Sonia Iglesia. Katie? Here. Yes, yeah, she answered. Katie answered. And Sonia answered as well. Moisha Indig. Great. Katie answered. Mike Chirichell is here, Jerry. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Here. Ryan Coonan. Yoel Landau. Marie Lianza. Here. Abraham Leibovitz. Yoel Lowe. Here. Thank you. Trina McKeever. I'm here. Thank you. Sante Maselli. I'm here. Thank you. Toby Moskovitz. Martin Needleman. Here. Thank you. Rabbi Needleman. Mario Domark. Thank you, Janice Peterson. Here. Thank you, Dana Racklin. Here. Thank you, Bella Sable. 
Isaac Sofer. She's there. By the way, I see Bella. She's Rob there. Rob Solano. Presente. El Tigre. Here. Tommy Torres. Present. Thank you. William Vega. Here. Thank you. Maria Vieira. Present. Thank you. Stephen Weidberg. Here. Thank you. Simon Weiser. Here. Thank you. Jerry, this is Ryan Coonan. I'm here. Jerry, this is Michael Churchill. I'm here. This is Michael Churchill. That's the end. Do you hear me, Jerry? Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's? Yeah. I have Mr. Churichella. I have your Landau. Is that Rob Needeman speaking? Ryan Coonan was speaking. I uh, have you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Rabbi, I see you. Do you have audio? Raise your hand. You're present. Thank you. Did you get Bella? Because I see her. Bella, do you have audio? Bella Sable, can you unmute yourself? Answer the call, please. Thirty-five members answering the call. Thank you, Jerry. Can I have an approval of the agenda? A motion to approve the agenda. I make the motion to approve the agenda. Second, Phil Caponego. Motion made by Julie. Second by Phil Caponego. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Abstention. I abstain, Marty Needleman. Motion carried. I have approval of the minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I said. Yes. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Rabbi Needleman, I can hear everything you're saying. Who made the motion? Dana. Dana, is there a second? I second, William. The motion um, set first by Dana, second by William Vega. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Ooh. Abstentions? I'll abstain, Katie Denny Horowitz. Thank you. One abstention, motion carried. Thank you. We'd like to welcome our new member, uh, Katie uh, Harwood. Welcome to Community Board One. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Public session. Can we have the speakers for the public session, please? Does anybody have a list for the public speaker? I do. Can you call it, please? Okay. Eileen Sunshine. Sunshine. 
Let me find her. She's not, she's not here. Christina Moore. Any Herzog? Not answering. She was she was calling by phone. I don't know what number they're calling from. What number is she calling from? I don't know. Well, I can't I can't identify. They don't give names with the phone numbers. And she gave it to Lynn. Welcome see. back. Bernie. Excuse me, Madam Chair. It's Sonia. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. I'm having a lot of people in the queue and in the uh, chat indicating they wanted to speak, but I'm not sure they um, they signed up. So I think that we should continue to announce that they have to sign up prior to speaking. I think we have to go over it again because they said they want to speak, but they haven't signed up. We're calling the speakers that signed up. We have it in our in our meeting notice that anybody would like to speak on the public session. They have to sign up by two eight by two p.m. on the day of the board meeting. Shall I proceed? Yes. John Ogren. Oh, just to find out. John. John, you're on. Hey, Madam. Oh, yes. I'm temporarily unmuted. Okay. Um, problems. Can you please speak, John? And actually, it can even wait until he wants to take. Can everybody mute, please? And can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is John Ogren. Um, I'm a cousin of, of Matthew Jensen, who was um, killed, murdered, what, whatever, um, run down. So I have two points to make. And please, please, please listen to both of them. Number one, I, I listened to all of this. I listened to your concerns and I listened to what you're saying and I don't give a rat's ass because my cousin is dead. I don't care. Number two is Matthew was two degrees from anything. Matthew um, knew everyone and if he didn't know everyone, the next person did. So my concern, um, Matthew's family is white and privileged. And, and, it, and even though it makes, it makes our um, dealing uh, with things easier, I can't help but think of people that have been run down or or thrown out or or have nothing they, they don't have two degrees of anything and i know that matthew would be horrified um that 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 matthew has all these resources because we're we're white and we're privileged and 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 citizens 
but there's so many people that that suffer more than we ever will. And I know that Matthew would be concerned for for all these things that I just besmirched and said I don't care about. Um, because in the light of Matthew's death, I don't I don't care about much. Um, but then when I think about Matthew and what Matthew would want, um, it would it would be justice and 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 equity and and rights and and rising up and protecting immigrants and 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 people that have nothing to to turn to. It, I, I just think it again and again about how as as horrible as this is, how easy it is for me to get things taken care of. Um, because again, I'm white, I'm privileged, and and things are easier. And I know that Matthew would just say, "We, we have to do more. We have to do more for for." people that that aren't people that have been struck down and people that have have been hurt and and dismissed. please summarize sir your two minutes is up please summarize All right. done i'm done i'm 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 i grieve um for matthew and for everyone who suffers thank you so much my condolences to you and thank your family you. Next speaker, please. Bronwood Breider. Marie, she can't. Oh, she she needs to be yeah. unmuted. She, she's I unmuted. I got it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for hearing us this evening. I'm working together with John, who just spoke, um, to propose a comprehensive redesign of McGinnis Boulevard, and I can provide some more context to his statement. Uh, on Tuesday, May 18th, on the corner of McGinnis and Bayard, PS 110 teacher Matthew Jensen was killed in a tragic hit and run. And he died short. He died shortly after 12:45 a.m. His name is added to a long list of individuals who've been made victims of traffic violence due to the poor, outdated planning of McGinnis Boulevard. And for over a decade, local advocates have been fighting for major improvements with few results that are not working to calm the traffic on McGinnis, where it's documented that two thirds of drivers are speeding. That's on average one. There's on average one crash every other day. Hundreds of children, colleagues, and families of PS 110 are grieving the death of Matthew Jensen. Our community at PS 110 will not ever be the same. And we're working hard to channel our collective grief into action in the immediate wake of this tragedy in collaboration with Assemblymember Gallagher's office, Transportation Alternatives, and the North Brooklyn Mutual Aid. We launched a petition demanding a comprehensive redesign of McGinnis Boulevard and today we have nearly 1,100 signatures. That's less than three weeks after the launch. Then on May 27th, we held a rally at McGulrick Park to make McGinnis safe, which was attended by Mayor de Blasio, as well as Assemblymember Gallagher, Senator Salazar, Kavanaugh, and Gunardes, Representative Carolyn Maloney, Councilman Siebel, Councilmember Stephen Levin, District Leaders Christina Naplatarski and Emil Bazell, and hundreds of PS 110 and North Brooklyn community members. At this event, Mr. Mayor de Blasio acknowledged our demands for a safe McGinnis by announcing that the office, mayor's office is designating money in the budget immediately to redesign and fix McGinnis Boulevard. Mr. Jensen's death has resurrected, resurrected the decade-long fight to protect our community against traffic violence on McGinnis Boulevard once and for all. We are not calling for a traffic study at an isolated intersection or for speed deterrence. We're calling on the mayor and the DOT to acknowledge the dangers of this entire mile long corridor and put forth a comprehensive redesign, which makes it impossible for cars to speed on McGinnis. 
Last week at the Transportation Committee, 16 community members called in passionately supporting this initiative with heartfelt pleas to ensure that this tragedy never be repeated. Please summarize. We urge the DOT and the mayor's office to think beyond incremental changes to a flawed, outdated design and accept this as a singular opportunity to bring a visionary redesign, comprehensive redesign to McGinnis Boulevard. And we look forward to working with CB1 to ensure that our community's demands are met. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My condolences. Thank you. You're welcome. Next speaker, please. Rachel. Elbetsky. I don't see her listed. You come help me, Mark. Hello. You're not speaking, please mute yourself. Please mute yourselves. Ian, Ian Linguist. Katie Nablikowski. Yeah, hi. Yes, I'm here. Thanks. Um, I would like to raise a red flag uh, for people to be uh, aware or pay attention to whether if River Ring does happen um, and the YMCA goes in there, that this might mean that the YMCA would no longer be in Greenpoint, where it um, uh, now is. Um, so it's something that's kind of gone under the radar in all the discussions about River Ring. Uh, we know that a YMCA, if River Ring does happen, um, is slated to go there. Um, but it's never really been addressed uh, whether this would mean that the Greenpoint YMCA uh, at its current location would cease to exist. So I just want to raise a red flag because we have discussions coming up about River Ring and there's going to be a lot to discuss. Um, and I just think this is something really important that um, needs to be on the uh, on everybody's mind um, because our Greenpoint YMCA is very valuable. Um, as it is in Greenpoint, in, in my opinion. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Next speaker. Oh, I'm sorry. It's eight o'clock. It's time for our elections. Oh, Lisa was the last speaker. Oh, she was the last. You got one more? Yes. Hi. Okay. I'm here. Marie? I'm here. All right. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. My name is Lisa J. Cox, and I'm a parent of a student at PS34 Elementary in Greenpoint. I'm also the school's green team leader, and I live on McGinnis Boulevard. Um, I, like Bronwyn and John, who spoke earlier, um, am reading a statement in support of a comprehensive redesign along McGinnis Boulevard. I'm reading the statement on behalf of PS34 Elementary School which um, includes our PTA, parents, teachers, administration, and wider school community. The PS34 community's hearts are broken for the loss of Matthew Jensen and for the gaping hole that this has left in the PS110 school community. After a year of loss and trauma due to the pandemic, this additional loss hits especially hard because it could have been prevented. McGinnis Boulevard is notoriously dangerous. Injury and death on this boulevard are nothing new. 
When will it be enough? How many more lives must be lost or injuries sustained before real change will happen? The PS34 community says enough is enough. Our own school sits right alongside McGinnis Boulevard, right at the corner of Norman Avenue, where 29 pedestrians and 21 cyclists have been injured and a cyclist was killed just in 2019. To state it clearly again, our school sits right there at that very intersection. This is where our children, families, and teachers cross daily. According to the Global Designing Cities Initiative, a program of the National Association of City Transportation Officials, I quote, more than 1.2 million people die on roads around the world every year. That is equivalent to roughly one person dying every 30 seconds or over 3,400 people dying every single day of the year. Many of these deaths occur on urban roads and are preventable crashes caused by behavior induced by street design. McGinnis Boulevard falls into the category of being rendered dangerous by design. It is a wide street that invites aggressive behavior in the form of speeding, double parking, and cars cutting each other off. The boulevard provides grossly inadequate protection for those crossing or waiting to cross, and most concerning for our school community, those who are most vulnerable to injury or worse are children and family pedestrians, our own students, families, and teachers. We envision a street with single lanes, wider sidewalks, and more green space. And I'd like to end by quoting Jeanette Sadiq Khan of the National Association of City Transportation Officials, who says, if you design a street that works for kids, you design a street that works for everyone. And we say now is the time to design that street. Thank you. Madam Chair, this is Sonia. Yes, Mr. Sonia. Mr. Nicolás Magin Pinto indicated in the chat that he had signed up last week to speak. And he's asking to please give him two minutes, but he did sign up. Um, okay, but we got to do our election too. So two minutes. Do you do you see him in the? Um, he's on the phone or he's on the computer. Well, he's in the chat. I'm not sure, but it's Nicolas. He's Mind unmuted. It. Okay, thank you. Okay, Nicholas. Hi. Can you speak a little louder, please? Hello. Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, my name is Nicholas Madrigindo, and I am a 15 year resident of the Williamsburg waterfront. I sent the following comments in to the community board by email, but I think it's very important that I also read them into the record today. Could you speak a little louder, please? I sent the following comments into the into the community board, but I also think it's important to read them into the record today. I'm speaking up to express my concerns regarding potential conflicts of interest among the members of the land use and landmarks committee who will be making a recommendation to the full community board regarding the river ring project at the former Con Ed site. I'm similarly concerned about any conflicts of interest regarding river ring among the community board members. The River Ring project contemplates two 60 story towers in a very densely populated part of the Williamsburg waterfront and therefore merits the community board's earnest and honest input before the required zoning change can take effect. The community board's and its committee's process for evaluating the River Ring project should be undertaken with integrity and in the public interest, free from interference and or influence by billionaire real estate interests. Have you finished, Nicholas? Nicholas, we can't hear you. Additionally, it has come to light that at least one member and spent it directly from the project as a proposed tenant of a substantial port signed retail space. In light of the foregoing, I call on the to, to require all members to certify that number one, they do not have any conflicts of interest related to the River Ring project, and number two, that they have not received or been offered or promised anything by Two Trees in exchange for favorable treatment of the project. 
it is imperative that any other conflict of interest and any attempt by two trees to influence the outcome of or to influence the outcome or undermine the integrity of the committees and the board's review processes be brought to light immediately so that the public can ensure a fair and transparent review of two trees proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jerry, we're going to do our election now. When I call your name, I will then call the position of the board that is being voted on this evening. Please answer with your choice for the candidate. And for the attendance committee, there is Please answer with your choice for the three candidates. Also, if for some reason I can't hear you or we're not making audio contact, if you want your voice to be registered, please call the office 718 389 0009. Anyone have any questions? Okay, Gina Argento. Bogdan Bakarowski. Mr. Simon. For the position I'm... of chair. For the position Mr. of Mr. chair, Firo. how do you vote? Mr. Firo. I'm sorry? Mr. The, the current okay. Mr. Okay. Firo. Okay, for the, for the position of first vice, how do you vote? Mr. Simon. The position of second vice, how do you vote? The, uh, the current, the second is the, the current uh, name, whoever is right on the position. It's Delphi. Right okay, for the position, just Delphi. for the member's yes. advisement, if a member, even though the member is, is unopposed, you still have, we still have to have a voting uh, procedure. Yes. Third vice chair. Mr. Alice Fuhrer. For Mrs. Alice Fuhrer. Gina Barros is the only candidate. How do you vote? Gina Barros. Thank you. For the position of financial secretary, Maria Vieira is the only candidate. Maria Vieira. Thank you. For the position of recording secretary, Sonia Iglesia is the only Sonia candidate. Iglesia. Sonia Thank Iglesia. You. For the position of member at large, Philip Caponegro is the only candidate. Philip Cap Caponegro. Thank you. For the attendance committee, I'm going to read you the one, two, three, four, five candidates, and you have to tell me which three, which you could vote for one, two, or three. So it's Eric Berzaitis in alphabetical order, Iris Cabrera. Julia Foster, Sante Maselli, Rabbi David Niederman. Number one. Who? Cool. How do you vote, sir? Number one, Eric Bizar. Okay. You're just voting for one? Yes. And uh, Simon and, uh, and, and Rabbi Niederman. Simon Rabbi. Okay, Eric Berzaitis and Rabbi Niederman. That's it? And, and uh, Iris Cabrera. Okay, that's three. Thank you. Lisa Bomanti. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Lisa. How do you vote Hi. for chair? Uh, D. Alice. First vice? Simon. Thank you. Second vice? Del Teague. Thank you. Third vice? Gina, Gina Barrows. Thank you. Financial Secretary Maria Vieira. Thank you. Uh, recording Sonia. Secretary Sonia Iglesias. Thank you. Member at Lodge Bill Capronegro. Thank you. Attendance Committee one, two, or three. Eric Rabbi Needleman and yes. Iris. Thank you. <clears throat> Gina Barros. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, Gina? Hello. Do you hear me? Okay. I uh, do. Okay. The chair. Um, the chair. Um, for Chair Alice Fuller. Thank you. First vice. Simon Weiser. Thank you. Second vice. Del Teague. Third, third vice. 
Gina Barrows. Yes, thank you. Financial Secretary. Maria Vieira. Thank you. Recording. Sonia Iglesia. Thank you. At large. Phil Caponegro. Thank you. Attendance committee, one, two, or three candidates. Um, yes, um, da uh, who is it? David Needleman, Eric Bosides, and Julia Forster. Julia Forster. Thank you. <coughs> Tian Brooks. Tian yes. Brooks. Eric Bersaitis. Bersaitis, I'm sorry. Eric? Yes, sir. The chair? Chesler. Okay. For first vice? Racklin. Got it. Second vice? Dell. Thank you. Third? Um, uh, Sonia? No, no, it's Gina. Oh, sorry, Gina. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> sorry. Yes, Gina. Yes, sorry. Financial Secretary? Uh, uh, Maria. Yes, thank you. Recording Secretary? Uh, Sonia. Thank you. At large? Bill. Thank you. Attendance committee, one, two, or three? Uh, Brzezides, uh, yes. Cabrera, Cabrera, and Michelli. Yes. Uh, Michelli, thank you. Tom Burrows? Yes, Jerry. For chair, Tom? Steve Chesler. Okay. First vice? Dana Ranchland. Thank you. Second vice? Del Teague. Yes. Third. Sonia Iglesias. Yes. Financial. Maria Vieira. Thank you. Recording. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I voted wrong. Sorry. Third vice chair is Gina Barrows. Sorry. Yes. Screwed that one up. <laughs> Recording is Sonia Iglesias. Yes. Um, Bill Caponegro. Yes. And Attendance then... committee. One, two, or three. Eric. Yes. Sante and Iris. Sante and Iris. Got it. Thank you. <clears throat> Iris Cabrera? Yes. For chair? Vialis? Yes. For first vice? Donna? I'm sorry? Anna? Dana? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Second vice. I'm sorry. Hold on. Del T is the current ch chair unopposed. Yeah. I'm sorry. Del T. Okay. Third vice. Baru. Yes. Thank you. Financial secretary. Maria. Thank you. Recording secretary. Sonia. Thank you. At large. Negro. Thank you. Attendance committee, you could vote for one, two, or three. Rabbi Nirema. Okay. Julia and Iris Cabrera. Okay. Thank you. Bill Caponegro. Okay. Stay with me, Jerry. Okay. The Alice. Simon. Okay. The Alice. Del. Weiser. Second vice. Dell. Yes. Gina. Third, third vice. Gina. Financial. Maria. Recording. Sonia. At large. Me. There's no me on the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> Attendance committee. One, two, or three Sports candidates. Three. Rabbi Niederman. Eric Rab hold on, I hold on. Rabbi Niederman. Okay. <laughs> you got the three of them? No, Rabbi I got Rabbi, Rabbi Niederman. Niederman. <laughs> what were the other two? Eric. Okay. And, and Iris. And Iris? Yes. Okay. Frank Carbone. Yes. Okay. Diallo the, chair, the chair. Okay. The first vice. Simon Weiser. Okay. Second. Del Teague. Yes. Third. Gina Barrows. Financial. Maria Vieira. Recording. Sonia Iglesias. At large, Bill Caponegro. Attendance committee, one, two, or three? Three. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Julia Foster. Yes. Sante Michelli. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.
Steve Chesler. All right, um, for chair Steve Chesler. Got it. For first vice chair Dana Rockland. Got it. For second vice chair Del Teague. Thank you. For third Gina Barros. Got it. Financial Maria Vera. Thank you. Got it. Recording Sonia Inglesia. Okay. Member Large Phil Campanegro. Okay. Attendance uh, Eric Mercedes, Iris uh, Cabrera, and Sante Maselli. So, thank you. Michael Chiricella. Michael Chiricella. Yes. Please, Fuller. What? Okay. Uh, Vena. Okay. Del T. Okay. Gina. Okay. Maria. Okay. Sonia. Okay. Bill Caponegro. Yes. Santa Michelli. Okay. Eric and Iris. Eric. Iris, thank you. Teresa Cinciata. Teresa Cinciata. I know she was here. I don't know if she's still here. Tish? Marie, do you see her on your screen? No, I'm looking for her now. See if she's someplace else. I don't All see right. her. Tish, we can't hear you if you're here. Call the office. Add under Dina. Giovanni D'Amato. All right. Um, Steve for Chet, okay. Dana. Del. Okay. Del. Yes. Gina. Maria. Yes. yes. Sonia. Yes. Phil, Yes. Rabbi Niederman. Is she voting? Yes. Eric Brazidis and Iris Cabrera. They're calling her name. She should call the office, they said. Who are we talking about? Dan, Dan please mute yourself. We were calling this, we were speaking with Mr. D'Amato. I don't know who you're talking about, but she, but anyway. Uh, Aaron, drink water, please. Yes. For chair. Chester. Yes. First Rocklin. vice. Yes. Second. Del Teague. Yes. Third. Gina Barros. Financial. Maria Rivera. Yes. Recording. Sonia Iglesias. At large. Phil Caponegro. Attendance committee Capo one, two, or three. Second. Eric, Sante, and Iris. Eric, Sante, and Iris. Okay, thank you. The Divinowski? Yes. How do you vote for chair? Yes. How do you vote for chair, Mr. Divinowski? Yes, I do. Arthur? Yes, yes, the chairperson, Mr. Dibinowski. Yeah. Okay, Chalice and Simon. I'm sorry because my internet is like breaking down. I, I don't understand what you're Hello? saying. It's it's either Hello? Stephen Chesler or the Alice Fuller. Mr. Dibinowski? Stephen or Alice? Alice, Alice Chesler. It sounds like he's combining the two names. <laughs> Alice, Alice, Alice. I'm sorry huh? because my internet is breaking down. Alice, Alice. What? Alice. I'm going out a vote on here. Come on. Sorry, What's it's that? Alice. Alice. Who's that? I think he's saying Alice. I'm not sure. Alice, Alice. Yeah, but. All right, there is no Alice. 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 He's saying the Alice. The Alice. The Alice. Okay, I don't know what the word is. Okay. And for first vice? Simon. Second vice? Mm -hmm. 
There's only one candidate, Del T. Yeah, Del T. I, I, I go, yes. Third vice. There's only one candidate, Gina, Gina, Gina Barrows. Gina Barrows. Financial secretary. There's only one candidate, Maria Vieira. Yes, yes. Riviera, yes. The recording Sonia. secretary. Sonia Iglesia is only one candidate. Sonia Iglesia, yes. Member at large, there's only one candidate, Phil Caponegro. Yes. Yes, what? Uh, yes, Caponegro. No. Okay. Yes, please. Now for the attendance committee, you can either vote for one, two, Three or no candidate. It's your choice. The, the, the one, two, three, the five candidates. No candidate. What's that? Our, What's no that? candidates. So you're not voting for the attendance committee. Okay. No candidates. Willis Elkins. Willis? Here. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. For chair? Uh, Steve Kessler. The first vice. Dana. Thank you. Second vice. Del Teague. Thank you. Third. Gina Barrows. Financial. Maria. Thank you. Recording. Sonia. Thank you. At large. Phil. Thank you. Attendance committee one, two, or three. Yep. Eric, Iris, and Sante. Eric, Iris. Sante, thank you. Julia Amanda Foster. Can you hear me? I can. Her chair. Madam, Madam Chair, full up. First vice. Liza. Thank you. Second Del vice. Key. Thank you. Third. Barrows. Thank you. Financial. Vieira. Thank you. Recording. Inglesia, Sonia. Thank you. At large. Phil. Thank you. Attendance committee, one, two, three, or none? Of course, myself, Foster, Cabrera, and Rabbi. Foster, Cabrera, Rabbi Needleman. Okay, thank you. That's it, thank you. Chair Fuller? Sorry, I had to uh, mute myself. That's okay. How do you vote for chair? The yeah, Alex Fuller. Thank you. First vice. Uh, Dell. First vice. I'm wise. I'm sorry. Thank you. Wiser. Second. Second vice. Wiser. Oh, no, that was first vice. Second vice. Del Teague is the only candidate. Oh, I'm sorry, Dell. Third vice. Wiser. Gina Barrows is the only candidate. Oh, um, um let me just do it. Uh, Barrows. Um, Recording Galatia. secretary. Financial, se financial secretary. Maria Vieira. Thank you. At large. Bill Capernegro. Attendance committee. Julia Foster, Rabbi Niederman, Iris Cabrera. Foster, Niederman, Cabrera. Thank you. Joel Goldstein. Joel Goldstein. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi. The chair. Chair. The leaves. For the first vice. Simon Wiser. Second vice. Deltic. Third. Gina Barris. Financial. Maria. Recording. Sonia. At large. Philip Capanegro. Attendance committee. Voting for Rabbi Niederman. Julia Forster, Iris Cabarro. Thank you. Joe Gross. Yes. How do you vote for chair? Madam Chair Fuller, Simon, Delty, Jean, Maria, Sonia, Philip. And and then for Rabbi, uh, Julia Foster and Iris. 
Thank you. Katie Horowitz. No. Here. How do you vote for chair? Um, Chesler. First vice. Dana. Thank you. Second vice. Del Teague. Third. Gina. Financial. Maria. Recording. Sonia. At large. Phil. Attendance. Eric Iris and Sante. Eric Iris. Sante. Thank you so much. Sonia Iglesia. Hello. Sonia? Yeah, for chair, Dallas Fuller. Okay. For first vice, Simon Weiser. Okay. For second vice, Del T. Okay. For third vice, Gina Barrows. Yes. For financial secretary, Maria Vieira. Yes. For recording secretary, Sonia Iglesias. Yes. For sergeant at arms, Phil Caponegro. Okay, member, it's member at large. Member at large, I'm sorry. Attendance for, uh, committee. Attendance committee, Rabbi Needleman. I was okay. Tavera and Julia Foster. Okay, thank you. Moisha Indig. Moisha Indig. Mm. Oh, Moisha Indig. Mm. No, no, no vote. Bozena Kaminsky. Bozena? Yes, um, uh, Chair Fuller. As uh, uh, Simon Weiser, Del okay. Gina, okay. yes, uh, Maria Vieira for finance, yes. Sonia Iglesia, yes, Phil Capronegro, yes, Eric Sante, and Rabbi Rabbi Niederman. All right, oh, yeah. Sante Niederman, who is the other one, please? Uh, Sante first is Eric Sante, Eric. okay, I got it, I got you, Eric. Okay. Sante and Rabbi and Niederman. Rabbi Niederman, yes. Okay. Uh, Ryan Coonan. Ryan Coonan. Yep, here. Okay, um, how do you vote for chair? Uh, Steve Chesler. Okay. First um, vice? Dana Racklin. Okay. Second? Del Teague. Okay. Third? Gina Barrows. Financial? Maria Vieira. Recording? Sonia Iglesias. At large? Phil Caponegro. Attendance committee, one, two, three, or none? Uh, three, Eric Presidis, Iris Cabrera, Julia Foster. Cabrera and Foster. Thank you. Yoel Landau. Yoel Landau. Yoel Landau. No vote. Marie Lianza. Marie Lianza. I'm sorry, I thought I'm mute. Okay, Fuller. Um, okay. Simon. First vice. Okay. Simon, yeah. Uh, Second. Del T. Okay, third. The, Sonia. No, third vice. Gina Barros no, is the only Gina candidate. Gina Barros, I'm sorry. Gina Barros. That's Barris. okay. Financial secretary. Um, financial secretary is. Uh, Maria no. Vieira. Yeah, Maria. Um, okay, Maria. Yes. Recording secretary. Sonia. Okay. At large. Philip. Okay. Attendance committee one, two, three, or none. I want Eric. Okay. Machella and Iris. Is that okay? Abraham Leibovitz. Do you hear me? Yes. How do you vote for chair? Del Fuller. First vice? Simon Weiser. Second vice? Del Teak. Third vice? Gina. Thank you. Financial? Maria. Thank you. Recording? Sonia. Thank you. At large? Bill. Did you say Phil? Bill. There's no bill. It's Phil Caponegro is the member at large, current member at large. He's unopposed. Yeah, it says Phil. Phil. Okay, thank you. Attendance committee, one, two, three, or none. Julia, Iris, and Rabbi Niederman. Julia, Iris, and Rabbi 
Rangers. Rabbi Newman, thank you. Thank you. you. Yes, here I am. Okay, how do you vote for chair? Chair Fuller. Uh, First vice. Simon Weiser. Second. Del Teak. Third. Gina Barrows. Financial. Maria Vieira. Recording. Sonia Iglesias. At large. Phil Caponegro. Tennis committee, one, two, three, or none. Kimmerman, Foster, and Cabrera. Foster, Cabrera. Who was the other one? Niederman. Rabbi Niederman. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, the phone's ringing and uh, it's it's drowning out. Thank you, Trina McKeever. Yes. Hi, Trina. How do you vote for chair? Uh, Steve Chesler. First vice. Uh, Dana Racken. Okay. And then I can just read you. Can I, Jerry? Can I just read you the names? Yeah, Del, sure. Del, oh. Gina, okay, Maria, Sonia, Phil. And then for the attendance committee, Eric, Iris, and Sante. Eric, Iris, and Sante. Great, thank you. Jerry? Mr. Michelli, yes. There are two callers coming, calling in two board members. They couldn't um, connect, so. Have I called their name already? Yes. All right, who is it? Mr. Indig? All right. Okay. Hello? Hello, Mr. Indig. Mr. Indig? Yeah, we're trying. We're sitting on the line. We're okay. We're listening to the entire um, uh, meeting. I'm sitting with Joel. Okay. Now. We're trying to vote. Somehow, right. I don't know. We, we listen right. to you, but you don't hear us. I can't hear you. Okay, sir. How do you vote for chair? Chair, for chair for Fuller? Okay, I have you on speakerphone. First, yes. First vice? Yes, Simon Weiser. Okay, second vice? Tano. Second vice. Del Teague is the current second. Oh, no, vice. second vice is, uh, second vice is, uh, you tell me the name, I'll tell you. Del Teague. Del Teague. Okay, okay. Th third vice. Gina Barros is the current person on a post. Yes. Gina Barros. Okay, financial secretary, Maria Vieira. Yes, Maria Vieira. Okay. Record I'm, I'm, I'm sitting together we with Joel Landau. Okay. Recording secretary, Sonia Iglesia is a, is the current recording secretary. Yes. Recording Recording, yes. Okay. I, I'm, voting for, I'm voting for her. All right. Member at large. Phil Caponegro is the current member at large. I'm voting for Bill Caponegro. Okay. Now the attendance committee, you can vote for one, two, three, or none. The candidates are Eric Brzezetis, Iris Cabrera, Julia Forster, Sante Maselli, and Rabbi Niederman. Rabbi Niederman. Okay. And who was who else were there? Sante Maselli, Julia Forster, Iris Sante Cabrera. Sante and then Julia Forster. Leave the same. We're good. Sante Maselli, Julia Forster. Okay. Thank you. I have, I have, I can you have, take the vote from Joe Freeman too? Or is he on Orlando? Who is this? No, Patty. Joe Landau. Mr. Put Mr. Lando on the phone. He did. He's right here. Okay. Oh, you have him the line? Oh, okay. He called you from his phone. Okay. He's on another phone. Yeah. Okay. I uh, didn't know he's. Okay. So okay. No problem. All right. I'll pick that up. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Landau? Yeah. Hi. Hi. How do you vote for chair? I'm voting for Fuller, Simon, Delta, Downtown, Eric, or any other. Third vice. How do you vote for third, third vice? Mr. Landau. Mr. Landau. Mr. Landau. Yes. Are you voting for the for the rest of the positions? Third vice. For Delta? No, third. You already told me Delta. Third vice is Gina Barros, unopposed. Yes, Gina Barros. Financial Secretary Maria Vieira, unopposed. Maria Vieira, also, yeah. Recording Secretary Sonia Iglesia, unopposed. Yeah, I'm also. Member at large Phil Caponegro is unopposed. Phil Caponegro, also. Okay, Attendance Committee, you can vote for one, two, three. I need them, man. Rabbi Nademan, anybody else? Okay. No, that's it. Thank you. Goodbye. Got to be a better way.
Mr. Maselli. How are Hi, you? Jerry. Hi, very good. good. Hi, Jerry. Good evening. I'm going to read it uh, all. Uh, okay. One after another, uh, correct me something. So, sure. Steve Chesler, Dana Racklin. Okay, Dale slow, Dick. slow. I'm going across the page. Okay. Steve Chesler, Dana Racklin. I got, I got that. Dick, Gina Barros. Yes. Yes. Uh, Maria Vieira, Sonny yes. Iglesias, yes. Capo Negro, Bruce yes. Ayres, Micheli, Cabrera. The attendance committee was Eric Brzeidis, Iris Cabrera, and Ms. Chelly, right? Ms. yes, me, myself. Thank you. Thank I got it. Thank you. Toby Moskowitz. Toby Are Moskowitz. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. The so chair. Uh, D. Alice Fuller. Okay. First Simon, vice. Simon Weiser. Yes. Del Teague. Yes. Gina Barros, Maria yes. Vieira, Sonia Iglesias, Phil Capanegra, yes. and then yes. Rabbi Nathan, Sante Michelli, and Iris Cabrera. Thank you so much. Martin Nealman. Marty? Yes. Okay. You ready? Yes. Uh, Steve Chesler. Yes. Simon Weiser. Yes. Del Teague. Yes. Gina Barros. Yes. Maria Vieira. Yes. Sonia Iglesias. Yes. Bill Capanegro. Yes. For the committee, it's uh, Iris Cabrera, yes. Eric Brasidis, and Sante Michelli. Yes, thank you. Rabbi Niederman. Rabbi, I can see you. I can't hear you. Sorry, sorry. Okay. okay. Rabbi Niederman for yes. chair. Yes, the Alice, Simon, Del Teague, yes. Gina, yes. Maria, Sonia yes. Gracio, yes. and Phil Cabanegro. Yes. Julia Foster and Iris and myself. Okay, thank you, Rabbi. Mary Odombo. Okay, I'll just read the list straight down. Go ahead. Madam, okay, Madam Fuller, Simon, Del, okay. Del, yes. Gina, yes, Maria, yes, Sonia, yes, Phil, yes, and my three are Julia. Sante and Rabbi Niederman. Thank you. Janice Peterson. Janice Peterson. Yes, Fuller, Weiser, yes. uh, Denepig. Uh, yes. Who is that? Uh, the next one, I can't read my own writing. Gina Barrows. Gina Barrows, Maria Vieira. Uh, yes. Uh, Sonia, yes, Phil, yes, Eric, Iris, and Sante Michelli. Eric, Iris, Sante, thank you. Dana Racklin. Hi, I'm here. Yes. Uh, the chair. Steve, Dana, yes. Del Teague, yes. Gina Barros, yes, Maria Vieira. Yes. Sonia Iglesias, Phil yes. Capronegro, yes. Dante Michelli, Eric Brzeidis, Iris Cabrera. All right. So Michelli, Cabrera, and Brzeidis. Thank you. Bella Sable. Bella? She's talking. You're muted, Bella. I can she, see you. Sherry, Bella? it's yeah, she called in because she's having trouble she's with on? the voice. She's okay, on the phone. Know. She's on line one. Bella? What is that? Sonar? <laughs> Bella? I can I can hear you. Okay. So, 
She asked to put her computer on mute. Put your computer on mute and then talk from your phone to the office. Yeah. Put the computer on mute. Bella, do you have your computer muted? You can't do both at the same time. Okay. So I'm mute, mute your computer and stay on the phone with me. Okay. Are you there? How do you vote for chair? Bella? We lost her. Marie, do you have her number to call her back? Yes, so I'll I'll do that. Isaac Sulfur. We'll come back to Bella. Isaac Sulfur. Isaac Sulfur. Rob Solano. For Chair Dialis Fuller. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Dana. Okay. Second Vice Del T. Okay. Third, Dina Barrows. Okay. Maria Vieira. Okay. Sonia Iglesias. Okay. Phil Carponegro. Okay. And then it's going to be uh, Rabbi, okay. Harris, and Foster. Rabbi Cabrera and Foster, you said? Yep, that's okay. it. Thank you. Del Teague. Jerry Bell is back on the line. Mm, let me try. One, mo one moment, though, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Marie. Marie, can you can you hear her clear? Uh, Hello. I'm going to try. De Bella? Jerry's not. Jerry, I can you. hear her. All right, Axel, how does she vote for chair? Okay, how do you vote for chair? Fuller? Hello. Hello. One moment, please. I'm sorry? First vice. First vice chair. Okay, and uh, who who is it for first vice? Simon. Weiser. Second vice. Del Teague. Third vice. Third vice. Gina Barros. Okay. Financial. Financial. Maria Vieira. Recording. Recording. Sonia Iglesias. At large. All right, we have that. And and the uh, member at large. Phil, Phil Caponegro. Okay. Senators committee one, two, three, or none. Wait one second. Rabbi Niedemann, Sante Michelli, and what was the other one? Eric Brusitis. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. What does Isaac Sofer for me? Yes, Mr. Sofer, go ahead. How do you vote for chair? The Alice Fuller. First vice. Simon Weiser. Second. Del T. Third. Mrs. Battles. Financial. Maria Vieira. Recording. Tony Iglesia. At large. Mr. Caponegro. Attendance committee. One, two, three, or none. Foster, Brusitis, and Niederman. Okay, Brusitis. Foster, and Niederman. Thank you. Only six to go. Del T, sorry okay. to keep you waiting. 
That's okay. So, uh, the chair, Stephen Chesler. Okay. First vice. Simon Weiser. Okay. Shell T. Second, second vice. Del Third T. vice. Tina Barrows. Financial. Maria Vieira. Recording. Sonia Iglesias. At large. Philip Capenegro. Okay. Attendance committee one, two, three, or none. Okay. Eric. Sante. Rabbi Niederman. Rabbi Niederman. Thank you. Tommy Torres. Tommy. Hi, Jerry. You hear me? How are you? Been waiting for this all night. Okay. How do you vote for chair? Chair Fuller. First vice. Wiser. Second vice. Del T. Third. You got to help me, Jerry. Gina Barrows, unopposed. Gina Barrows. Gina. Okay. Financial secretary. Maria Vieira. Recording secretary. Sonia Iglesias. Thank you. Phil, Phil, member at large. Phil Cap. Okay. Attendance committee, one, two, three, or none. We got Rabbi. Okay. We have Julia Forster. Okay. And third is Iris Cabrera. Okay. Thank you. Gracias. Mr. Vega. Uh, hi, Jay. I'm going to call about it. Order first is Go Steve. Ahead. Steve, Dana, okay. Del T. Okay. Gina. Okay. Maria. Yes. Sonia. Yes. Phil. Yes. And for the three, I have Eric, Sante, and Judy. Eric. And who? Sante. Who was the last one? Judy Foster. Julia. Yeah. Yeah, Julia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Maria Vieira. Maria? I'm here. I'm here. I was trying to unmute. Okay. Uh, for chair, D. Alice Fuller. First vice. Simon Weiser. Okay. Second. Del Teague. Third. Gina Barrows. Financial. Maria Vieira. Recording. Sonia Iglesias. Okay. At large. Phil Caponegro. Okay. Attendance committee, one, two, three, or none. All of them. You can't. It's too many. I, I realize that. <laughs> <laughs> I, realize I mean, that. I could put all of them. It just voids a vote, but. <laughs> I vote. They should not be on. Okay. Uh, Rabbi Niederman, Julia Foster, Edis Cabrera. Okay, thank you. Steven Steve. Weinberg. Jerry, will be the Alice. Hi, Steve. Good evening. Del, First vice. Simon. Del. Del. Gina, okay. Maria. Yes. Maria. Yes. Philip. Yes. Rabbi Niederman. Yes. Forster and Miss Cabrera. Forster and Cabrera. Did you say Cabrera? I couldn't yes. hear you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, Simon Weiser. Yeah, you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, Chair Fuller, Simon yes. Weiser, Del Teague, Gina Barros, yes. Maria Vieira, yes. Tony Iglesia, Phil yes. Caponegro, yes. Julia Foster, Rabbi Niederman, oh, wait, 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 wait. Cabana. Slow down, slow down. Foster, Rabbi Niederman, Rabbi Niederman and Iris Cabana. Okay. Is there anyone whose name I have not called or you have not heard me? Going once, going twice. Okay, Madam Chair, I will do the tallying now. Wait, the phone is ringing. See, they're calling it. Marie, answer it. Just see what it is, please. I'm gonna unmute Sean after he does this. Is it somebody that didn't vote? I don't know. Jerry, no, this is this is someone who wanted to speak okay. at the meeting. All right. You could move on. Hey, I'll, I'll do the tally. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue with the meeting while you do the tally. 
And, okay. and just so everyone knows the, the vote, how everyone voted becomes part of the minutes. So, so this is a public record. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is elected officials. We have one uh, elected signed up, uh, Mr. Andrew Epstein from Assemblywoman uh, Emily Gallagher's office. Is Mr. Epstein here? Is Mr. Andrew Epstein here? Okay. Uh, I'm, looking for, I'm looking for him. I no longer see him on the call. Thank you, Marie. Okay, well, if he comes back on, let me know. Okay, and I, I, I have one person um, who was, we had a call during public session. She's on, she's on the phone. She wants to speak. Okay. Okay. I just have to find her to put her on. I think I lost her again. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, committee reports, um, public safety and human services, Tom Burroughs. Uh, we had a very good meeting. Uh, we had a number of representatives from Woodhall Hospital came. Um, the report goes into a lot of things that are happening at the hospital, the expansion of their emergency department. Um, the Women's Health Pavilion project got three and a half million dollars from Senator Salazar's office, so they're moving ahead on that. Um, a number of departments have been combined to make it a much more efficient there. Uh, the facade restoration project has restarted. Um, there be, uh, I've attached to the report a number of different events. This is Pride Month, so the hospital will be having an LGBTQ Pride event on June 30th. Um, and we're I'm hoping that Marie Vieira gets back on the community advisory board, but if not, we can always use a volunteer for the community advisory board. Um, the police department, the 9 0 was the 9 4 wasn't available, but the 9. Sorry, the 9 4 was available, but not the 9 0. Um, there's a lot of discussion about the issues of the dirt bikes, scooters, ATVs. The city is doing a citywide focus on that. Um, the whole the issues about the McGinnis um, redesign, and also there's a Manhattan Avenue safety carter that the businesses are working together. And so everybody remembers National Night Out is going to be August the third at our, both the 90 and the 94 precinct. Um, on another public safety kind of issue is the issue of um, garbage, trash cans, sanitation, and illegal dumping. And um, Geo has been. My under the BQE guy, and there's now a committee meeting on a regular basis put together by the Assemblywoman's office to try and focus on the issues uh, underneath the BQE uh, with cleanup and garbage dumping and stuff like that. So we had a very good meeting. Read the report, read all the attachments from the hospital. That's it for that one. Please continue with SLA. Okay, the SLA committee. Um, the report is sent out to everyone. We had um, new liquor licenses and after the committee met, we ended up with out of the group of 17 new six, we recommend denial on eight. We recommend approval and three, the applicants requested postponement after we asked them a lot of questions that they weren't being able to answer. So, um, it may be easier and quicker to do all the new ones together. As I indicated, there's. Six that were recommending denial and eight approvals and three postponements. So, who wants so a lot to make of motions? 
Rob? In. Is there a second out there? I hear nothing. I second that. I'm seconding Phil Caponegro. Okay, who's calling the vote? Okay, a motion is made in second. Marie, can you uh, can you call the roll call vote? I'll do it. I'll hold off. I'm almost done with the attendance committee. Uh, Marie, you have the note. I didn't. I was doing a tally, so I don't have the 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 title for this vote. So I'll just call the vote, and I'll just put. It's, roll the, it's for the new liquor licenses, which are six denials, okay. eight approvals, and three postponements. Okay. New. Okay, Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barrows. Yes. Tian Brooks. Eric Brzezetis. Yes. Tom Burrows. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Bill Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Steve Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. Arthur Dibinowski. <laughs> T. Willis Elkins. <laughs> Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Yeah. Yes. Joel Gross. Yes. Katie, Katie Horowitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Yes. Ryan Coonan. Abstain. Joel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Yolo. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby Moskovitz. Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman. Yes. Mario Domerk. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Rackley. Della Sable. Della, Della you, I can't hear you again. If you want, you can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thumbs up. Okay, that's a yes. Isaac Sofer. Yes. Thank you. Rob Solano. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Del Teague. Yes. Yes. Who is that speaking in the background? Toby Moskowitz. Could you just ask the question? Because my phone froze. I had to call back in. I apologize. That's okay. How do you vote? Can you repeat the question again? The votes? It's a it's the motion from the SLA committee on the new license recommendations. Yes. Yes. I, and Bogdan says yes too. Bogdan says yes too. Thank you. Tommy Torres. Yes. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieta. Yes. Steven Weidberg. Simon Weiser. Yes. Thank you. Steve, Steve Weidberg. Okay. Yes, John, I'm sorry. I couldn't get in. Okay, so noted. 33 yes, one abstention. Motion carries. Uh, there were um, 24 renewals that um, came before the committee. The committee reviewed them. Um, we reached out to both the 9 4 and the 9 0 precinct if there were any problems or complaints with any of them. We had no complaints from the public or either of the precincts. So the committee recommends approval of all the renewals. I would like to make the motion to approve the. Rob Solano second. I second that. 
Okay, motion by Bay by uh, Benaski and second, uh, second by uh, who? Bye bye, Niedema. Okay, roll call vote, please. Gina Argento. Oh. Bogdan Bukarowski. Yes. Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barros. Tian Brooks. Eric Brzezis. Yes. Tom Burrows. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Mike Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Yes. Joel Gross. Yes. Katie Horowitz. Uh, it's actually Katie Denny Horowitz, and yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have to note that because that's not yes. the way the borough president is going to do so. But we'll make that correction. And it's a yes, correct? Yes, thank you. Son Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Yes. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Joel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Joel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby Moskowitz. Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman. Yes. Mario Domark. Yes. Janice Peterson. Dana yes. Rackman. Yes. Jan, did you just vote? Did I hear you? Being on oh. mute. Yes. Okay. Bella Sable. You can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down again. Okay. Isaac Sofer. Robert Solano. Yes. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. Yes. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieta. Yes. Stephen Weidberg. Steve um, Weidberg. Simon Weiser. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Did you get mine? No. All right, yes, I'm having problems with my phone. All right, thank you. I said yes also, Gina Barrows. Okay. Oh no, did I freeze? Oh no, good. 33 yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Jerry. Does that complete your uh, report? No, no, we have we had three previously postponed items, which the, the applicants asked to postpone because we have a lot of questions for them. And then they come back, hopefully meeting some of our requests. Um, Bistro South Corporation, the committee is recommending approval. Uh, Catalpin NYC LLC, um, the committee voted to recommend approval, but it was a vote of 6-4 and 1 abstention. There were speakers on both sides of the issue of this particular location. Um, but the committee did recommend that the full board uh, approve this and New Hope Brooklyn um, doing business as 10 Hope. Um, they changed, they were doing a method of operation change and they um, changed their closing hour, got rid of live music and DJ after the request. So um, we're recommending approval of those three previously postponed items. Back to make recommendations. A lot of motions. Second. Um, Bogdan and who second? Vega. Vega. 
Roll Thank call you. vote, please. Thank you. All right, this is on the previously postponed, right? Right. Gina Argento? Bogdan Bakarowski? Yes. Lisa Bamonte? Yes. Gina Barrows? Gina? Tian Brooks? Eric Brzezis? Yes. Tom Burroughs? Yes. Iris Cabrera? Yes. Phil Caponegro? Yes. Frank Carbone? Yes. Stephen Chesler? Yes. Michael Chiricella, Teresa Cinciata, Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Yes. Joel Gross. Yes. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. yes. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Yes. Ryan Kunin. Yes. Joel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Joel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. No. No. Toby Moskovitz. Yes. Martin Needleman. Rabbi Needleman. I'm sorry. Martin Needleman. Rabbi Needleman. Mary O'Donnell. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes, and Hanny is waiting online. Hanny Herzog. I don't know who that is. Dana Racklin. Yes. Bella Sable. Bella. Okay, I see you. Bella's a yes. Isaac Sulfur. Yes. Robert Solano. Yes. Del T. Yes. Tommy Torres. Yes. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieta. Yes. Stephen Weiberg. Simon Weiser. Yes, yes. Jerry, Steve, I'm sorry. Steve, I hear you. How do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Marty Needleman votes yes also. So noted. Yeah. Thirty four yes, one no. Motion carries. And there's just and there's just one more thing. There's the special permit came to the board. Um and the construction site, they, they're gonna be operating a temporary mini golf and they needed to get a beer a license to, to dispense beer and wine. Uh, normally they only get four uh, special permits. This required twenty one special permits, and at the end of the special permit period the the bar or whatever it's going to be at the um, golf thing is going to be considered a branch office of, of the other half brewery and they won't have to get permits. So um, we uh, recommended approval of those special permits. A lot of motion. Is that for the two trees site? Yeah. Okay. Bailey's so, Rob, you, Rob, you made the motion. I second yes, motion. I second. Rob and uh, to, uh, Tommy, roll call vote, please, sir. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamanto, yes. Gina, Gina Barros, yes, Tian Brooks, Eric Brzezitas, yes, Tom Burroughs, yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Brian Carbone. Yes. Steven Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. 
Teresa Stanciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. Arthur Dibanowski. P. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Yes. Joel Gross. Yes. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yeah. Yes. Moisha Indig. Hosanna Kaminsky. Yes, Jerry. Thank you. Brian Coonan. Yes. Yoel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Yoel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby Moskowitz. Yes. Martin Neilman. No. Rabbi Niederman. Mario Domark. Yes. Janice Peterson. Dana Racklin. Yes, yes. Dana Racklin. Yes. Paula Sable. Bella, you can give me a hands up, hands down. Hands up, is that yes? Okay. Isaac Sofer. Robert Solano. Yes. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. Yes. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieira. Stephen Bogdan Weidberg. Yes. Bogdan yes. yes. <laughs> Stephen Weidberg. Yes. Simon Weiser. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Bogdan say yes. I have you, Bogdan. Thank you. This is <laughs> special permits. Thirty-three yes, one no, zero abstention. That's it for the report. The next committee meeting is June 22nd. Um, please go through the list that was posted in the public session today. If there's any issues or complaints or concerns, please let the committee know. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I believe the uh, results of the election is finished. So you want to give the results, Jerry? But the position of Attendance committee. Eric Brazitis, 24, 24 votes. Iris Cabrera, 34 votes. Julia Foster, 21 votes. Sante Maselli, 21 votes. Rabbi Niederman, 27 votes. So the top three vote getters are the committee will consist of. Iris Cabrera with 34 votes, Rabbi Niederman with 27 votes, and Eric Brazitis with 24 votes. So those are the, that's your attendance committee. For the position of member at large, Phil Caponegro received 44 votes. He is the member at large. For the position of recording secretary, Sonia Iglesia received 44 votes. She is the recording secretary for the new term. For the position of financial secretary, Maria Vieta received 44 votes. She is the winner for the new term. For the position of third vice, Gina Barros received 44 votes. She is the, the third vice for the new term. For the position of second vice, Del Teague received 44 votes. She is the winner for this term. For the position of first vice chairperson, Ms. Racklin received 15 votes. Mr. Weiser received 29 votes. Mr. Weiser is the projected winner of the race. For the position of chairperson, Mr. Chester received 14 votes. Chair Fuller received 30 votes. Chair Fuller is the projected winner of the race. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you everyone for your vote. And I look forward to working another year with everybody. Congratulations to the rest of the team. I look forward to working with you. Congratulations. Thank you.
Um, next, uh, land use committee report. Now. Okay, thank you. Okay, the first, um, the first item was 307 Kent Avenue. That is a request to change from an M31 to an M15. They would build um, a nine story commercial building designed around smaller office and industrial spaces, which they hope will suit better to the post COVID uh, situation where there's, there's an expectation that people, some people will still work from home. And so that office space and industri industry space might become smaller. Um, they would also have, uh, they would get the extra FAR, 1.5 extra FAR for a medical facility. We asked them how, what guarantee we had that they would put a medical facility in. And they said that um, the, the way they have it set up, it actually goes partly on one floor and another, that it is set up in such a way that there are a very large variety of medical kinds of facilities would be appropriate. They hope to um, be able to have a medical facility uh, rent and move in, but they said if there is not a strong likelihood that they're getting somebody in there, that because it's a small application, it wouldn't be cost effective for them to have a 1.5 FAR laying bank vacant. So they said that if they if, if there isn't a strong likelihood, um, they won't build the extra and they'll just do with less FAR. Uh, we did consider conditioning approval on some kind of restrictive declaration to require some amount of industrial space, but we opted not to do so um, because we felt that in, in, in general, the, the, um, the development is conforming um, and that the proposed plan will address in a, in a good way the post shutdown need for smaller offices and light industries. So um, the committee voted to approve the application, 14 voted yes, there were no, no votes. So I need a vote. Uh, to uh, the, 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 the committee voted to approve the application. Rob Solano, motion to approve. A second, Trina. Rob and Trina, roll call vote, please. What was the address on this one, Bill, please? Oh, um, 307 Kent Avenue. 307 yes. Kent Avenue. Great, thank you. Gina Argento. Ogden Pakarowski. Lisa Bamante. Yes. Gina Barros. Yes. Tion Brooks, Eric Brusadis. Yes. Tom Burrows. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. <clears throat> Arthur Dibinowski, T. Willis Elkins. No. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Yes. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Hurwitz. Yep. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Yes. Ryan Coonan. No. Joel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Joel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. No. Toby Moskowitz. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Toby Moskowitz votes yes. Thank you. Martin Needleman. No. Rabbi Needleman. Mary O'Dommer. Yes. Janice Peterson. No. Dana Racklin. Abstain. Abstain. Bella Sable. 
Are you, hand raising is yes. Thumbs down is no. How do you vote yes? Thank you. Isaac Sofer. Rob Solano. Rob Solano. Solano, yes. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. Yes. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieira. Yes. Stephen Weidberg. Yes. Simon Weiser. Yes. Thank you. Twenty five yes, five no, one abstention. Motion carries. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, the uh, next application is seventy seven seventy nine Jerry or Gary Street. This is uh, to amend a previously approved application for a house of worship. The um, application actually will provide for a smaller uh, building from seven stories to five stories. Uh, the building will have the actual same footprint, but will wind up taking 100% loss coverage instead of 65% because they were originally counting on a uh, business deal where they would uh, be able to use the, um, the height um, uh, allowances for three, set, three different, three additional plots of land that fell through so um, they decreased the, uh, the height of the building and the building will have the same footprint as I said but it would wind up having 100% lot coverage. The committee voted to approve the application 11 yes 0 no need a vote. Is this second and first on the motion? Anybody second first? I second Vega. Solano second. Okay, Vega, Solano, roll call vote, please. Gina Argento. Bogdan Bakarowski. Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barrows. Yes. Theon Brooks. Eric Brzezidis. Yes. Tom Burrows. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chircella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Arthur okay. Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Yes. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Rosina Kaminsky. Yes, Jerry. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Joel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Joel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Abstain. Toby Moskowitz. Yes. Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman. Mario Domark. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Racklin. Yes. Bella Sable. Hands up is a yes. Thank you. Isaac Sofer. Robert Solano. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieira. Yes. Stephen Weidberg. 
Yes. Simon Weiser. Yes, I got it. All right, so what? Lano, yes. Twenty-eight. Yes, zero, no, one abstention. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. The, the third is it's called Elevate Transit Zoning for Accessibility. The MTA is proposing a uh, citywide text amendment that will uh, allow them to work with private developers to have, have an easier time uh, making uh, changes to the um, to the entrance and exit from the train station so there'll be more um, accessibility and they do this by um, creating these transit easement uh, certifications um, if so for this and this is only for new development or if, if, a, if a, there's a building that's uh, going to have um, an amendment you know a change and, and, and an amendment to the building um, and this is in areas that are R5 or more and in manufacturing districts for all lots that are at least 5,000 square feet and within 50 feet of a station. At that point, any developer will have to consult with the MTA to find out if there is a need for uh, an easement to, to be able to get a better access to the, to the train station. And then, then, in order to do this, they will um, give certain um, um, relief to, to the developers, uh, consisting of floor area and height allowances, relaxed requirements for use of space, setbacks, and parking. Now, the density bonuses are only in R9 and R10 districts, and we don't have uh, any of those in our district. Um, we can put in any comments by June. 14th, the committee voted unanimously to approve the application and to ask the full board to submit a letter of approval to the city planning commission by June 14th. So I need a vote. I might make a motion, Phil Caponegro. Phil Caponegro, that's second. William Vega seconds. Phil and Vega, roll call vote, please. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamanti, Gina Barros. Yes. Tian Brooks. Eric Mercedes. Yes. Tom Burroughs. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinziata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater, Arthur Dibinowski, T. Willis Elkins. Yeah. Julia Mantla Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Yes. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yeah. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Ozena Kaminsky. Yes. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. Joel Landau, Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz, Joel Lowe, Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. No. Toby Moskowitz. Yes. Martin Needleman. Rabbi Needleman. Mary Adamerick. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Racklin. Yes. Bella Sable. Isaac Sulfur. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Tommy Torres. Uh, Vega says yes. I heard Tommy you. I thought I, I thought somebody spoke over you. Tommy Torres. Yes. 
Yes, I thought so. Thank you. Maria Vieira? Yes. Stephen Weidberg? Yes. Simon Weiser? Yes. Twenty seven yes, one no. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. One more. One oh one Zarek Avenue. The uh, Department of Transportation is seeking to take control of one oh one Zarek and, and expand its sidewalk inspection unit and re relocate the street lighting warehouse operations to this site. The um, building already exists. They don't have to add anything to the building. Um, they they will um, have their operations there. They will have some trucks parked there. No big semis, but some um, pickup van pickups, vans, dump trucks. They will. They said they're not going to have any concrete materials on the site. They will not be preparing any concrete on the site. The, um, they did say that they were going, they were looking to install solar panels on the roof. We also encouraged them to do a green roof. They said that we said they would try to work with the owner of the property to do that, but it, that wasn't in their control. Then the operation, the hours of operations at 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Several people pointed out to them that there are several large entertainment venues nearby, and at least one of them, has daytime events that when lot, large crowds come and go during their hours of operation, they didn't seem to really uh, understand that. Um, so we encouraged them to make sure that they have a plan to deal with the uh, that contingency. They promised that they would, and our recommendation um, was to approve, but with the suggestion, very strong suggestion, that DOT include in its future presentations a plan to take into consideration the proximity of the nightlife venues, and also um, with a very strong recommendation that they be required to at least have solar panels on the roof and that they, um, that the future people that they present to will also encourage them to try to uh, do a green roof. Um, we had 13 voting yes, no one voted no, so I need another vote. Motion, Motion. to approve. Second. Second. And Vega Persaitis. seconds. And Vega seconds. Vega seconds. Roll call vote, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gina Argento. Bogdan Bakarowski. Lisa Bamante. Yes. Gina Barros. Yes. yes. Tian Brooks. Eric Brusadis. Yes. Thomas Burroughs. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chirchella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater, Arthur Dibinowski, T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes, sir. Joel Goldstein. Yes. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Horowitz. Sonia yes. Iglesias. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Ende. Rosanna Kaminsky. Yes, Jerry. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. Yoel yes. Landau. Yes, Ryan, yes. Yoel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Yoel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby Moskowitz. Martin Needleman. Rabbi Needleman. Mario Domerick. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Racklin. Bella Sable. Sorry, Jerry, I'm here. Dana Racklin. Yes. 
So noted. Bella Sable's a yes, so noted. Isaac Sofer. I have you, Bella. Thank you. Isaac Sofer, Robert Solano, Del Teague. Yes. Yeah. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieira. Maria Vieira. Yes. Thank you. Stephen Weidberg. Yes. Simon Weiser. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Jerry. Twenty nine in the affirmative, including Mr. Torres. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. That's all. My our next uh, meeting will be June twenty eighth, and I just want to say, um, hope that we have a happier and healthier and just a better year next year. Thanks. Madam Chair, may I speak? Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Dale. Also, Thanks, Madam Dale. Chair, can I be recognized after uh, somebody else is just? Yeah, Vega here wants to. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, I got a text from Andrew Epstein, who works for Emily Gallagher. He extends his policies. Uh, he's stuck in Albany in a legislative meeting. So, again, he apologized to you as well as the, the rest of the community board. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else want to say something? Hanny Herzog is on the phone and has been waiting for a very long time. Yeah, I know. I was going to call her after Dale finishes her report. So, hey, Marie, hey. will you call her and open up her line, please? Yes. Can I can I speak, Madam Chair? Uh, you tell me when you're ready. Is Miss Is Hanny ready? I'm tr I'm going to try to get her again. Okay, go ahead, Michelle. Now, once we are on uh, land use, uh, some is not on this uh, on the agenda of, of today, but I, I, in the regard to his river ring, I just want to inform all the board uh, um, in regard to the vote of the community board about asking Council Member Levin uh, to work with outreach committee on the East River Ring. Uh, ben Solitaire immediately reached to me a few days after uh, the vote. And uh, since then, um, he didn't call me back. I called him back. Actually, I received his text uh, last week saying that he was apologizing for not returning my call. I texted him back asking about that it was important to us to uh, know to understand how uh, council member uh, Levin want to proceed in regard to organize a forum. I didn't receive any response to my text message. So, uh, so as of today, uh, as a chair of the outreach committee, I don't know was the position of uh, our council member in regard to organize a forum uh, for the East River Ring to better inform the community. That's all. Thank you. Is she better? Thank you. Is she ready, Marie? Uh, Henny? Yes. Henny? Yes, okay. this is Henny. You're on. This you're is on. Henny. Okay. This is Henny speaking. Do you hear me? Yes, yes we can you hear you. Please minutes. speak. Hello, this is Henny Herzog. Do you hear me? Yes, Henny. Oh my God. I was, I really, actually, I hung up, but the phone didn't disconnect. So it was just on the loudspeaker the entire night. I'm, who is going to be hearing me now if I say everybody, anything? Everybody, Henny. Okay. We all have so really got two minutes. Excuse me, two minutes. Okay. They spoke about the human rights commissioner, about the housing discrimination. They spoke about the parks department, about the parks, uh, whatever. Nobody mentioned the word about the pool. I'm here tonight to represent hundreds of neighborhood women coalition from all walks of life that are looking forward to jump into this beautiful pool as soon as possible. We need the pool now, 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 now. And I'll say it again and again, now, now. It's time for Parks Department to move forward and listen. Yes, listen to its constituents and give them what they need and address to their needs. 
especially after this pandemic, the COVID era. Women need aquatic services now even more so. Neighborhood women, we, the neighborhood women, are primary users of this pool. Again, we need the pool now. Thanks for listening and good night. You're welcome. Good night. Environmental protection, Steve Chesler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we met back on the uh, 27th of May. The uh, the big t we had a number of items, but the big ticket item was uh, National Grid came in to present about their uh, upgrading their Greenpoint liquefied natural gas facility, essentially uh, modernizing, as they put it, two of the vaporizers there. And um, they were represented by Renee McClure, who's their community person, and their new vice president of corporal affairs, Brian Malone, and a, and a um, number of others. And their their main focus was that they're, you know, I think based on the reaction of the community to their uh, pipeline project and to this and to the board's reaction previously, they emphasize their commitment to the state's climate goals and the city's climate goals. And that um, this vaporizer upgrade project um, inevitably would help reduce the you know, fossil fuel. Um, it would definitely wouldn't increase it. Um, and just increase in efficiency. And, um, and at, at the end of the presentation, they they showed us a video that essentially looked like a commercial that you might see before a movie when we were, you know, going to movie houses and seeing them in person. Um, and so the uh, the community reaction and community reaction, we were really, you know, taken back. There, there, there. It was a very generalized presentation, and people had issues with um, safety, with just yeah. the. Uh -huh. Working with liquefied natural gas, which is uh, you know, incredibly volatile, and the, mo the modernization of this facility um, is predicated on getting a. I mean, yes, you have threatened. Can you please mute? Whoever oh. that is? Thank you. Heading. Um, uh, they need to revitalize uh -huh. a trucking facility, as they say. Thank you. Um, that during during you know uh, extreme cold weather, and the, the trucks would transport the and refill the, the vaporizers with liquefied natural gas. Current apparently right now it's illegal to do that. There's a special variance that a national grid would need to get, and and people just question the safety of of having such a thing, and they. Said that was out of scope for this meeting, um, and then people also took great issue with lack of communication and, and meeting with community members and um, groups of in the community near both the pipeline and the um, the LNG facility, and um, you know and they didn't really provide data specifically on how um, you know why they need why they need this modernization. And um, specifically, how you know by adding this infrastructure, how that's going to help reduce their you know um, their climate emissions and comply with the Climate Act um, that comes to, comes into fruition in 2050, where the state needs an 85% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. So, um, and so, inevitably, what we ended up doing is. Um, we, we we drafted two letters that the uh, committee unanimously, unanimously approved to issue. Um, the first one was the National Grid specifically requesting um, de you know, the data that was lacking from what they presented to us. Um, you know why the trucking is illegal as it relates to the GNC facility. Um, what alternatives to the LNG facility? In relation to compliance uh, with the Climate Act, 
and achieving pathways, which the city is uh, uh, that's their initiative to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and how and when the national grid will communicate directly with communities in close proximity to them. Our, our project was at the pipeline and the vaporizer facility and the trucking station. Um, and what will the cost be to consumers for this facility and trucking upgrade? And um, does National Grid test for radon at its um, Greenpoint LNG facility provide details? And will the testing be different for the upgraded facility? And what is National Grid's response to the thousands of comments that have been submitted against the project with the, the DEC? And then secondly, um, we approved issuing a letter to uh, the mayor, the governor, the commissioner of the uh, Department of Environmental Conservation, a, a person who is in charge of, you know, issuing the LNG permit, PSC commissioner, um, a group related uh, in uh, FDNY and in the mayor's office, essentially saying uh, that. Um, National Grid needs permits from the fire department to be able to build to do the upgrade of the vaporizers and to modernize the trucking station, approximately you know um, uh, uh, nine permits. So the letter will basically say um, to to urge the mayor to um, you know disapprove these permits until National Grid provides our board. Um, with the data that we're asking for and communicates the details of the MRI project and the Greenpoint Energy Facility proposals um, for these communities that are in close proximity to the project and environmental uh, justice communities. So um, I need a motion to um, approve sending these letters. I'll make a motion, Trina. And I second Vega. I was going to no. second too. We have a roll call vote, please. Motion has been made and second. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barrows. Yes. Tian Brooks. Eric Brzezis. Yes. Thomas Burroughs. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Ozena Kaminsky. Yes. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Joel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Joel Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yep. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby Moskowitz. Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman. Uh, Toby votes yes. So noted. Thank you. Rabbi Needleman. Mary O'Domark. Yes. Janice Peterson. Dana Racklin. Yes, Jerry. That was me. Yes. Thank you. Dana Racklin. Yes. Bella Sable. Bella, thumbs up, thumbs down. Bella votes yes. Isaac Sofer, Robert Solano, Del Teague, yes. Tommy Torres, William Vega, yes. Maria Vieta, yes. Stephen Weidberg, Simon Weiser, Jerry, yes, from Stephen. Thank you, Steve. Simon Weiser. Twenty-nine in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. 
Um, next item is the Department of Environmental Protection is proposing to amend uh, their code to define um, a food waste liquefier, which essentially is a digester that where um, entities, especially businesses, industry, um, basically mix food waste with water to break it down and then discharge it into the sewer, sewer system. So the DEP is proposing a rule to make those illegal because it's just wreaking havoc on our, our, you know, our, our wastewater system, creating what are called fatbergs, um, just these clogging um, um, masses of fat and food. And so um, we would like just to go on record as um, approving, you know, recommending this proposed rule change, um, even though the deadline is passed, but it's, I think it's important and our committee feels important to go on record to approve that. So, um, so I, I need a motion to, for the board to approve this uh, rule change for uh, food waste liquefiers. I make a motion, Bożena Kaminski. Sonia seconds the Iglesias. Bozina and Sonia, roll call vote, please. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barrows. Yes. Tian Brooks, Eric Brzezetis. Yes. Tom Burrows. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Steven Chesler. Yes. Michael Chuachella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Arthur Dibanowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Ozena Kaminsky. Yes. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. Joel Landau. Yes. Marie Lianza. Yes. You sound like you're getting further away as the roll calls go. <laughs> Abraham Leibovitz. Yo Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby, Toby Moskowitz. Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman. Mario Domerick. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Recklin. Bella Sable. Yes, Dana Recklin's yes. Okay. Bella Sable votes yes. Isaac Sulfur. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. Torres. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieta. Yes. Stephen Weidberg. Yes. Simon Weiser. Twenty eight. Yes, motion thank carries. You. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just um, have no more voting items, but just a few other items to mention. Um, next, we had uh, community updates. First, Anti Boothares, who is the um, executive director of Norfolk and Neighbors, came in to talk about what they're working on. And um, his present, as mentioned, everything I've mentioned tonight, the National Grid presentation and the uh, food digester law that's attached in the, the report, our committee report, as are these um, uh, community updates and a few other things. Um, so they're just some really great things that they're doing, helping uh, converting, you know, a local school bus depot to, you know, electric vehicles, um, air monitoring initiative, They've really found some really disturbing but interesting findings, and they're pairing with uh, NYU to dive deeper in, in analyzing those results, and you know soil soil testing, um, and they have a you know a kind of a legacy map on uh, called the Eli Project on their website describes just kind of industrial and toxic history of a neighborhood. So hats off to them and Anthony. And um, 
Next, uh, we had um, our own uh, Willis Elkins, who's the ED of the North Newtown Creek Alliance to give us an update on what they were up to. And there's just a lot going on there. You can you know, read the list in our report, but essentially, um, you know, they're you know, deeply involved with what's going on with Newtown Creek. Um, there's, you know, it's kind of a two headed monster there with the city trying to comply with the Clean Water Act in creating their long term um, pollution control plan. And specifically, Newtown Creek reduce all the combined sewage overflow. And um, their plan is basically to reduce that by 60%, um, not 100. And recently, and then the, the other monster is the Superfund site there in which the Environmental Protection Agency is um, involved with and basically had a, a uh, basically a no decision on the city's plan basically saying that the 60 percent essentially is okay and it won't affect the the super fund element of, of the um of, of the of the creek um but willis did indicate that there'll be an opportunity potentially for the board to weigh in um because this in this you know a moment um, they're, the EPA is just dealing with one, what they call operational unit. Next, we'll be dealing with the entire creek. And I think it'd be great if the uh, the board had an opportunity to weigh in on that. And then they're just um, they talked about just the, all these wonderful open space um, initiatives going on, the new phases of the Newtown, uh, the uh, the nature walk. Um, so you can go all the way from, you know, from the end of, um, I guess it's page all the way. You can twist around around the, the you know the canals, and end up um, you know, essentially work your way into Kingsland um, Avenue, which is wonderful. Kingsland Wildflowers is opening up again for people. Gateway to Greenpoint um, is still, I guess there's still I guess funding issues there, but that's an open space next to the plant on Kingsland that they have been uh, working with, and um, greening our uh, roadways. Um, with pollinator gardens at the ends of, um, of um, you know, uh, some of the street ends by the creek. So uh, really, really great uh, what they're doing over there. Really great that uh, they're operating in the neighborhood. Um, and then just some. Um, Jess, you know, we're, slowly, we're slowly losing our quorum. Okay. Um, I'll, okay, I'll wrap up. Thank you, um, Dialis. The... Um, um, the uh, 34 Barry Street, the, the building that was built on top of what they found out to be a giant plume of chlorinated solvent and petroleum. Thanks to our committee, especially Laura Hoffman, the state DOH did an investigation just to ensure there isn't vapor intrusion into the building, and they confirmed that. So uh, hats off to everyone for that. And the rest you can read in the report. And thanks to the committee, it was a long, long night. And um, thanks everyone for listening at uh, 10 o'clock. Thank you, Chancellor. Transportation, Eric, and we have some votes on that. So everybody that's here, I would like you to stay so we can get these votes done. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I have posted the motions in the chat for everybody to refer to. I'll try to be as quick as I can. First, um, congratulations to all the winners tonight. Um, and uh, thanks to everyone that voted for me. Um, okay, so we met on the second last last Wednesday. We had a quorum despite the glitch at the borough president's office. Um, went through some housekeeping uh, rules of decorum to keep things civil in the meeting. Item two was an update by uh, Andy Anglesby and Joe O'Donnell of MTA, uh, giving us an update on the ADA elevator installation. Um, the uh, the um, Presentation is uh, was sent in the report. You can refer to it. There was no controversy with uh, the Grand Street elevators. Uh, Tommy Torres, who is VP at uh, Progress High School, was at a walkthrough um, with um, uh, MTA, myself, and some others, uh, and um, there really wasn't any questions about that elevator installation, except uh, concerned about encroachment on the bike lane, which they're going to get back to me from the contractor. Uh, there is no update on Lorimer Street, except that they're still working internally to figure out if they can kill the stairs on Lorimer Street. We hope that they will do that. Um, Don Suma, who's been um, very active in, um, in this fight, uh, has resubmitted his questions to MTA that we still have not received answers for. 
Uh, Andy Inglesby has assured me that he will try to get as many of those answers as he can, but uh, they don't want to say anything too soon. The work on Grant Street will begin uh, at the end of July. Uh, the staging has already begun at Keep Street for the Metropolitan G Station and will continue to be there. They expect work to start sometime at the end of the month. However, none of the work will start on the um, controversial portion of Lorimer Metro until they have a resolution. Uh, no vote on that matter. Item three, McGinnis Boulevard, uh, safety improvements. Um, you heard from the, the public members um, and Ms. Breitner, who is a member of our committee. Um, uh, it was a very difficult hour to sit through. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sorry that Mr. Ogren um, didn't really have a chance to, you know, condense his reports, but I have to tell you that his speech at the rally um, the previous week was, was very moving. Um, and he's been under a lot of pressure, being really part of this fight to improve the safety at McGinnis. Um, you know, writing this report, I had to like, I had to rewatch the, uh, <clears throat> the, um, Wow. Uh, meeting, uh, and it was very difficult to sit through a second time. Um, a lot of tears as I, I, I wrote this report, I have to tell you. Um, you can read the, the text and all the comments uh, in the report. They are extensive. They are from parents, uh, students, and other stakeholders that live on and around McGinnis. They cross it daily. I think we all know how dangerous McGinnis is. Uh, I think the numbers speak for themselves. They're out of proportion with the rest of the streets um, that are highly trafficked in our neighborhood. Um, I know I've had conversations both at the committee level, I've had conversations with uh, Jerry uh, about the problems on McGinnis and it really is time for a full and comprehensive redesign of McGinnis Boulevard to make it safer. They cut through the neighborhood in the 50s um, and uh, it's time that they make up for that sin by um, by atoning with a, a plan that, that's a safer for everybody. And I hope everybody can agree on that. Um, in, in light of this, uh, we, we uh, had three motions that I hope that we can vote on block. Um, they are in the chat. Um, I will read all three and then we can decide if we want to have discussion on it or if we can go ahead with a vote, if that's okay with everyone in the chair. First motion, uh, support the demands of the community for an immediate, full, and comprehensive redesign of McGinnis Boulevard from the Pulaski Bridge to the to Meeker Avenue. And that was made by Ms. Breitner, seconded by Mr. Vega. It was passed unanimously without objection. Second motion, um, and those of you that stuck around for the end of the last meeting, you'll remember that we, the committee, voted to, as uh, pro forma, to uh, send letters to the appropriate um, parties to get responses on accident investigations. So the second motion actually is two separate letters, but it's one motion. And the motion is the committee in accordance with its standing order recommends to the full board a letter of inquiry to Captain Velasquez of the uh, NYPD 90th Precinct, Kings, Kings County District Attorney Eric Gonzalez and NYPD Chief of Transportation Kim Royster in the status of the investigation into the traffic fatality at the intersection of Havemeyer and Hope streets of Mr. Angel Aguilar Duran and to Captain Fahey of the, of the 94th Precinct, Kings County District Attorney Eric Gonzalez and NYPD Chief of Transportation Kim Royster uh, in the status of the investigation into the traffic fatality at the intersection of McGinnis Boulevard uh, and Bayard Street of Mr. Matthew Jensen. And I can't believe I didn't say his name at the beginning. I'm so sorry to everyone listening. Matthew Jensen teacher at PS 110, loved by the community, killed by a hit and run driver. Um, that was also passed unanimously, uh, the, the motion to send letters of inquiry. And the third motion uh, was a request uh, for a safety and lighting study of McGinnis Boulevard and Humboldt Street from Bayard Street to Herbert Street. And that was made by myself, seconded by Ms. Quonin and also passed unanimously. And the logic behind the last motion um, you'll remember that Meeker Avenue uh, has gone through an extensive study and there is a plan to redesign Meeker as well. Um, we think that a lot of the heavy lifting has probably been done on that treacherous inter uh, the McGinnis Humboldt exit off the BQE. This is adjacent to that and we think it's appropriate um, that um, and hopefully because some of the work has been done, the study can be done a little bit faster. It does meet the 90 day fatality rule by MTA, uh, I'm sorry, for DOT to study Bayard Street, but we think it's appropriate to uh, to expand it um, to uh, to Herbert. 
So uh, those are the three motions on that item. If there's no discussion, um, I ask for a on block vote for those three motions. Does anyone have any objections to a block vote on these items? No, I make a motion. Can I can I say something, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I believe, uh, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able uh, to attend uh, the last committee, uh, the OT committee, transportation committee meeting. Uh, I believe that they require far more attention uh, to be voted on. Of course, I'm in favor. I uh, I I drive uh, regularly on McGuinness Boulevard. is one of my routes on my Vespa, on my scooter. Uh, you know, it's quite dangerous, but I'm very respectful uh, of the uh, the speed limit, which is 25. There are cameras, you can get a ticket. And, uh, and it is unclear to me, uh, uh, voting now, what that imply? What is the read the sign? Because uh, uh, voting for a study to happen, voting uh, for a study of traffic lights, a study of uh, that will tell us the statistic of the accident, I'm absolutely in favor. But voting now and to the old board member for a redesign, which will mean uh, reduce uh, the lane, which will mean increasing the traffic in streets where I live or where other of my neighbors live, I'm, I believe it's a rushing uh, vote that uh, uh, it all involve an agenda which uh, I want to bring to the attention of all the board members. This no of this motion can be voted just in block. They require, I will not feel to vote it tonight, just as they are, to say what kind of redesign. What is that? Three bikes lane, one only lane. Unfortunately, it was put there on the 50, but we're not going to revolutionize the infrastructure of the city, the BQE, the bridges, and all of that. Whatever safety measure we have to take, Yes, but the redesign tonight, I don't know what, the, what I'm voting for. And then there is another motion, Bankers Anchor Plaza, again, is part of my daily route, I believe as a major function to decompress sometimes traffic from other streets. I know it looks deserted and I like the occasionality of using as a plaza and I know other development will take place on the street, so we do not know today uh, what traffic will happen, but tracks pass through the street. There is industrial lot, there is industrial zoning, they need to be served. Again, I don't know what is the redesign is. I believe we are uh, experiencing a constant agenda from other groups. They are pushing for things that are unknown at the moment. We vote in block, and then the results are certain consequences that may have impact. I ask for other studies for a uh, quantistic study, the transportation, uh, 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 the Department of Transportation has not done before we vote tonight in block. And even by portion, we, even if we destructure by block, I wanna bring this to the attention of full board. I'm not saying I'm against, I'm against about voting like this. That's all, I wanna bring this to the attention of everybody. Is there any more comments? Uh, I have a comment. This is Wait, Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, before before you go ahead, if I if I may. Of course. Okay, thank you. Um, so Sante, I hear you, um, but th that's actually not the vote. Um, so the vote is to support the demands of the community for a redesign, and that by definition will include a full um, and and comprehensive study by DOT before anything happens. Um, and so I, I understand your concerns, but there will be a lot of time, like this isn't gonna happen overnight. And um, for those of you that are following this issue, um, Assemblywoman Gallagher has uh, is gonna be working with uh, every, as many people as she can to get input on this issue. And so there's gonna be a lot of time to talk about what can and can't happen there. Um, so this is really just supporting the will of the community to redesign McGinnis, which I think everyone knows is like a death trap. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, on, McGinnis all the time. I'm, on, I'm on McGinnis all the time and uh, I see people speed past me every day, every day. So that's it. It's, we're not calling for specific details right now. We're just calling for, uh, we're just basically backing up the mayor who said he would put money towards a, a, a comprehensive study. That's basically what's happening here. Thank well, you. I don't agree with the mayor either. I I believe that uh, 
it is criminal to break the law. It is criminal to speeding. Today it happened so many times. I saw people with children in a car passing on red lights, not on McGuinness in other street. So I'm definitely, I, I agree on that. I don't think it's an issue just to read the sign. I fear the read the sign, it will change other dynamic. And I know what you're saying, but I know that there is another agenda in the background and the community board should be all aware. And, uh, and the read the sign will bring certain changes. That's why it is wanted the read the sign. And uh, I'm not aligned with that. Okay, Brian, who's that? Ryan has something to say? Yeah, I just wanna say, We've put up so many ghost bikes and so many pedestrian memorials. There will be, we spent five hours listening to kids, parents, family members crying. I know that you couldn't come, but like we have a, we have stuff that was unanimously voted and you can vote no against it, but it's 10, 12 at night and you didn't come to the meeting. And I think that everyone has a whole report, but we've, there's like thousands of people that marched with the I mayor have, asking I, Ryan, for this. I have the please call. let Sanko, me finish. Sanko, please Sanko, don't interrupt. Allow her to finish. Go ahead, Ryan. Just, just saying that we should vote, that this was unanimous. There's a report. We've heard that Sante thinks there's an agenda and cool, but can we vote? Because that's what we're here to do. Okay, that's the end of the conversation. That's the end of the conversation. There's no other objections to the blanket vote. Can I have a motion, please? Sonia Iglesia makes a motion. Phil Caponegro. Second the motion. Sonia and Phil, roll call vote, please. This is a motion. This is a motion to accept the recommendations of the Transportation Committee so stated in the Transportation Committee report. Is that correct, Mr. Representatives? Uh, three, yes, three of three of the motions on item two of the transportation committee report. Thank you, sir. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte, yes, Gina Barros, yes, Tian Brooks, Eric Brzezidis, yes, Tom Burrows, I don't know what it is, Iris Cabrera, yes, Phil Caponegro, yes, Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Yo Landau. Uh, Bozina votes yes, I'm sorry. So noted, thank you. Yo Landau, Marie Lianza. Abraham Leibovitz. Yo Lo. Jerry, yes, it's Marie. Gotcha, thank you. Abraham Leibovitz, Yo Lo. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. No. Toby Moskovitz. Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman. Mary O'Domerick. Yes. Janice Peterson. Dana Racklin. Yes. Bella Sable. Bella votes yes. Isaac Sofer. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieira. Yes. Stephen Weidberg. Yes. Simon Weiser. Twenty-five yes, one no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And Jerry, just to clarify, that's actually item three, not two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And I just 
one thing on item uh, two, Simon uh, brought up to Andy that they're still having a problem with buses laying over on Lee Avenue. Uh, and so Andy's going to work with DOT and we're going to try to do something um, with them shortly. I just wanted to make that that point. Uh, item four, um, congestion issues on Flushing Avenue between Kent and Claussen. Folks that know that area know how, how bad it is in terms of the traffic backups. Now there's a construction site there. They're encroaching on the roadway. They've taken away a parking lane, which Etc. It's, it's a whole thing. So um, we're going to work. Uh, I've asked Simon to reach out to Board Three because Taffy Place, which is part of this problem, is in their board, and we don't want to step on their toes. So um, we're going to try to get a walkthrough together with somebody from CB3 um, and DOT to see if anything can be done there. Um, item five uh, was uh, the last Transportation Committee formal study uh, conversation on open streets. Um, I tried to put a list of recommendations together. Everyone hated it, so we withdrew it. Um, and you know, there's just no consensus on the on the committee or um, you know what I, whatever. Like we talked about this a lot, and there's there there are still problems that need to be addressed. Um, but as um, you know, my discussions with Chair Fuller uh, and with others, you know, this is really the the the. Um, the job of the elected officials um, to really get into this and get some best practices for open streets because it's now the law. So um, after some discussion, uh, we we uh, we decided that, um, um, and it's uh, the third motion um, that it's appropriate to form a CAG, uh, community advisory group, on the open streets issue, um, so that there is a clear um way to assign new open streets re review existing open streets uh, make it usable and workable for everybody um across the board uh, address the quality of life issues um and uh, but it really needs to be the elected officials that have to step in at this point because there's no excuse now uh we're coming out of covid um governor keeps announcing lower and lower covid uh, rates so we should we should really start thinking about being normal human beings again. And part of that is gonna to be to have a community advisory group. And so the motion was that the committee recommends that the board send a letter to all elected officials, including the, the district leaders um, of community board one, as well as New York City DOT, NYPD, FDNY, and DSNY to impanel a community advisory group, a CAG, to assess best practices for for legislatively mandated open streets program. And that was made by myself and seconded by Mr. Vega. Um, it was not unanimous vote. We had one vote uh, in the negative with no abstentions, uh, but we did have a quorum. Is there a motion? Bill Capenegro. Vega seconds. Bill Capenegro, Vega. Roll call vote, please. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barros. Yes. Tian Brooks, Eric Brzezetis. Yes. Thomas Burrows. Yes. Iris Cabrera. El Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. Arthur, Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Hurwitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisa Indig. Rosanna Kaminsky. Yes. Thank you. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Ryan, Ryan Coonan. Yes, Yo yes. Yes. Yo Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz. Yo Lowe. Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Yes. Toby Moskowitz. Martin Niederman. Yes. Rabbi Niederman. Mario Domrock. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Racklin. Yes. 
Bella Sable. Thank you, Bella. Isaac Sofer. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieira. Maria Vieira. Yes, I see you. Stephen Weiberg. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Simon Weiser. Twenty eight in the affirmative motion carries. Thanks, everyone. And I, I just want to, you know, give a shout out to Jan Peterson. I sat in on her women's committee uh, meeting and uh, there were there was a it was really positive. And uh, I think that over the summer, um, the the decisions that they made at that meeting, I think will go a long way to, to help everybody out. OK, so um, blah, blah, blah. so last one was Bankers Anchor um, and Bankers Anchor is uh, those of you familiar with um, the automotive high school, it's behind it, um, right by the lot radio. Um, so it's basically a slip. So if you're on ferry, um, the majority of folks will make the turn on, to, in, including industrial vehicles, will make the turn on the left onto um, onto Banker to ac access the IBZ. Uh, North 15th is is only used if you miss that turn and it's very tight for for a large truck or or other vehicles to make um it's kind of a de facto uh plaza at the moment a lot of the times um the presentation was really just well done on point um you know kevin and his crew kevin lachera and his crew that put this together they reached out to the church they reached out to lot radio they reached out to the businesses they really they really did the work Basically, it's a plaza proposal. It makes sense to everybody on the committee. It was voted for unanimously. Um, we think it's a good thing, and I hope that the board will agree with it and uh, they can put in their plaza proposal. Uh, and so that was a motion to support the plan for Bankers Anchor um, Plaza on North 15th Street from Berry Street to Banker Street as proposed in the presentation. And those of you, uh, I sent it around. Um, and again, passed unanimously without objection or abstention. I'll make a motion too. Now. Vegas. In Vegas seconds. Can I make a motion? Vegas second. Vega second? Can I have a roll call vote, please? Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barros. Yes. Tian Brooks. Eric Brzezidis. Yes. Tom Burrows. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Yes. Bo Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricello. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. yes. Uh, Giovanni D'Amato, yes. I have you. Aaron Drinkwater. Yes. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Yeah. Joel Goldstein, Joel Gross, Katie Denny Horowitz, Sonia Iglesia, Moisha Indig, Rosina Kaminsky. Yes. Ryan Coonan, Joel Landau, Marie Lianza. Yes. Abraham Leibovitz, <clears throat> Joel Lowe, Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Oh. I'm sorry. No. Thank you. Toby Moskovitz. Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman. Mario Domark. Abstention. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Recklin. Yes. Bella Sable. Yes. Isaac Sofer. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieira. The rest of my life to blow up. Maria Vieira. Thanks. Stephen Weiser. Control and muting. Yes. Yes. Simon Weiser. Jerry Isaac Sofer said yes in the chat. I don't know if you can count that or not. All right. So noted. Let me find Jerry, it here. It's so. Did you get my vote? Uh, I say yes. No, I have it now. Thank you. 
Thank and you. Ryan Coonan votes yes too. So noted, Ryan. Thank you. Twenty six yes, one no, one abstention. Motion carries. Thank you, Jerry. Great, thank you, everyone. And so, just just to quickly run through the rest, you can read it. Um, the over the summer, uh, the, some of the I've asked uh, members to volunteer to go through old uh, transportation committee reports, um, old letters from the board to DOT, etc. Just any outstanding issues that we haven't gotten answers on that we really need to get answers on. Um, so I'll be I'll actually be sending an invitation to the full board for anyone that wants to volunteer to help work on that. Um, old business, um, there are some concerns about uh, getting information on the Sarah Pitts death. I, I'll work with DOT uh, to see if we can get some answers on that based on the 90 day review rather than having to file a FOIL request. Um, and then new business. Uh, um, so there's a school on STAG. It's a pre-K between Lorimer and Leonard. And um, Ms. Rika Shimada uh, has been trying to get a school crossing sign, a stoplight, because there's one on every other intersection except for Stag and, and Lorimer. Um, and uh, she's been told over and over again, no, it doesn't, it doesn't meet the warrants or it doesn't, it's not uh, workable. And then they, they, she asked for it a few months ago. And then DOT told her that she could reapply in July, which is certainly not 36 months. So uh, we'd love it if the board could send a letter to DOT asking when the last um, study of that of that area is, and it's um, the Stag Street Center for Children Pre-K, um, and it's Stag Street between Lorimer and Leonard. So if, if uh, Jerry and Marie, if we can get a letter out to DOT to ask them when the last uh, study was done, and so if we're in the window, it's a school, so it it gets priority. So hopefully we can get a proper study done there and, and get some uh, resolution for the parents that have to cross those streets. Um, and then Ms. Horowitz, um, you joined the meeting. Thank you uh, for coming. Um, there's going to be a walkthrough with the uh, a tour uh, by New York, uh, uh, North Brooklyn Parks Alliance of the park under the K Bridge, uh, which just opened last week. And um, the Commissioner Gottman, uh, Gottman is coming. For that tour, um, Evergreen will also hopefully be involved in that, and myself if I can make it, and um, and that's it. So everybody have a great summer. There won't be a meeting until September. Um, I thank you all for a very difficult year and putting up with me and my rants and um, and all the work that we've done. But um, I hope you think that the work we do is important, and uh, and I really do thank everybody on the board. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Madam, we appreciate Madam all the Chair. work everybody does, and uh, it's not easy, but we thank everybody. I'd like to recognize, acknowledge um, Pinkus Hollican from the uh, Controller's Office. Next report, bear with Madam us. Chair, we, if, we, Madam we Chair, if I, may, reports. What? if I may, uh, in a related matter uh, to follow up with Eric, uh, Graham Avenue between Meeker and Frost, since the repaving, they painted no crosswalks in that area. So you have Richardson Street, you have Herbert Street, you have two bus stops on one on each side of Graham Avenue, and DOT refused to put in any crosswalks. So I've been, I've been hounding them, hounding them, hounding them. Finally, they're coming out with the, with the pedestrian unit to take a look at it. This Thursday at 10 a.m. I'm gonna I'll do a memo tomorrow, but it was just confirmed with Keith Bray. He's gonna come out and he's gonna look at it. So that's Graham between Meeker and Frost. We'll probably meet at the board office. He said it'll only be for about a half hour, so 10 o'clock. So if anybody's available and they wanna they wanna walk through with us, more than happy to have the help. You got, you know, you've got the schools on both sides, you've got kids walking from from Cooper Park to go to 126, and there's just no crosswalks. It's just a horrible situation. Like I said, since the repaving, it's been like that, and we've been, you know, trying to get them out there, and they're finally coming out this Thursday at 10 o'clock. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. I'll try to be there. And, and yes, I've noticed that myself, but I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for bringing that to our attention. 
As we know, the community board is the eyes and ears of the community. If we see anything in the community that needs our attention, bring it to the attention of your committee chair or to the uh, office. Thank you. Dan uh, yeah. Peterson, Women's Issues. Uh, the um, just two points from the uh, Women's Committee. One is Eric just brought up that we had a meeting on open streets. And I want to just put out here that that I and a lot of people are quite concerned about the way the community has been taking on handling differences they're having with each other. We're at a very important place where a lot of hard decisions are being made that affect many people's lives that do require the kind of thoughtfulness that Sanjay was just talking about. So when we ran our meeting on open streets, we wanted mainly to do it is to bring people from different sides together and let people really hear each other because open streets are going to be here, but they don't have to be everywhere. And there does have to be protocols uh, about how, which street, where, and how, and people that live on these streets should have a right to say something. So we spent, and that's what Eric is saying, that we will be pulling out the information that came out of that meeting. We had the United Nations there and several other groups that are really looking at public space. And I want to say that I am generally, and, I, and it's too late at night to be frustrated at all, frustrated at the lack of depth that we have about really important issues like what is public and what is what is uh, public space. The net pool, the, the open streets, the parks are all public space. And there are many issues that people are having in each of these places because we have not clarified clearly what we require of, of any city agency, any private sector group when they come here. And that's why it's always admirable to listen to the liquor group and the work that Tom Burroughs and that committee has done because they really worked out a protocol. So we're suggesting that we need to have a protocol. And I don't believe and that's fine that the city council people should take a role, Eric, but I think our own community has to make decisions about what we think are the protocols that need to be done. Otherwise, we can have another met pool that is poorly used, hardly used at all, because the pool people won't see the pool as public. You know, and then you have handy yelling and other people. So I just wanted to bring up that we're gonna we're gonna focus in in depth about what is public. What is the role that we as a community have to say, but we also use a set of basic agreements. I'm to out. Bye. What? Who's right. right. yelling? Is somebody yelling? Anyway, we are saying I'm going to send to all the committee chairs the basic agreements that we use for running our meeting because this like this was a lovely meeting tonight. We had hard issues. People listened respectfully by and large, and we need to be able to do that. And I'm not trying to lecture. I'm saying we can't solve the issues of this community if we don't come together and take more time. And we obviously don't have enough time at these meetings. So I just wanted to uh, bring that up and uh, thank you for listening to me. And I just had my 80th birthday, which I know you're all happy to know and and I feel very empowered <laughs> by having it and feel very good about the years of being part of the community board. So thank you. And I want to admire Eric. I can't imagine anybody and now he gets embarrassed, but that's can you imagine running that committee with the amount of things that are in transportation? You know, I mean Tom Burroughs too. So I just want to do a shout out to the two of you for caring and doing the heavy lifting. And that doesn't mean other people aren't, but once in a while we need to appreciate what each other does and I will thank you. So Sanze and I are gonna keep looking at what does it mean to be, have open space and what does it mean to have the right protocols for people to participate and we're going to bring them forth because, and I know that someday Dialis will tell us about our big win that seems to be occurring at Lindsay Park because there are good things happening, but they have a lot to do with how do people participate? Thank you.
very much. Thank you, Jay, and I'd like to wish you a happy belated birthday and wish you many, many more. And thank you for all your service to the community. Parks and water, uh, parks and waterfront, uh, Phil. Thank you, Dialis. Make this real fast, everybody. Uh, we have our next meeting is June 23rd at 6.30, Wednesday evening. Um, and I did want to, it's been mentioned a few times tonight, but I wanted to bring up the Metro pool for a second. I, I looked into this. I have no idea why this pool is closed. We as a community need this pool open and the rec center too. Um, so I would like to make a motion for a letter to be sent to the mayor and the parks commissioner to open up Metro Pool and Rec Center immediately. That's it. I make a sec I say I, I make the motion. Second the motion. I second. Um Jan, who second? Sonia. I think Sonia. Sonia. Roll call vote, please. Gina Argento. Yeah. Bogdan Bakarowski. Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Gina Barros. Yes. Keon Brooks. Eric Brzezetis. Yes. Tom, Tom Burroughs. Yes. Iris Cabrera. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Teresa Cinciata. Giovanni D'Amato. Yes. Aaron Drinkwater. Arthur Dibinowski, T. Willis Elkins. Yes. Julia Amanda Foster. Joel Goldstein. Joel Gross. Katie Denny Horowitz. Yes. Sonia Iglesia. Yes. Moisha Indig. Gina Kaminsky. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Joel Landau. Marie Lianza. Yes. Hi, Jerry, you forgot about me, Bozina Hi. Kaminsky, yes. Thank you, so noted. Abraham Leibovitz, Yolo, Lowe, Trina McKeever. Yes. Sante Maselli. Same. Toby Moskowitz, Martin Needleman. Yes. Rabbi Needleman, Mario Dahmer. Yes. Janice Peterson. Yes. Dana Recklin. Yes. Bella Sable. Bella votes yes. Isaac Sofer. Robert Solano. Del Teague. Yes. Tommy Torres. William Vega. Yes. Maria Vieira. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Stephen Weidberg. Simon Weiser. Yes. You hear me, Jay? Yes. Thank you. We all hear you, Simon. <laughs> oh, we just made we just made quorum. Twenty four yes. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> One abstention. Motion carries. Oh, okay. Thank Phil, can I add one thing to our parks, uh, to the parks report? It's sure, Trina. Go ahead. I'll go ahead. And what I want to add is that the news that Mary Salag gave birth yes. to a, a baby girl last week. Oh, yeah. Mama and baby are doing well. Her name oh, is great. Ivy. Great. Ivy Ann, I believe her name is Mary. Ivy Ann, that's right. Ivy Ann. Maybe, right. maybe now she'll care about the women's swim. <laughs> a shout out to Mary. Okay. God bless her. Thank you. Thank you, all. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Trina. Give uh, Mary our congratulations and best wishes. Um, that concludes our part, our um, committee reports, Parks Department uh, as written. Is there any old business? Is there any new business? I just want to note uh, Ben Solitaire noted in the chat that he wanted to say something. Ben didn't sign up. You know, we can't keep we can't keep running our meetings like this. It's in our notice. We send a notice to the chair, the, the chairpersons of the committees when they get their reports in to let us know when, when they're given a report. We make a list and that's what we go by. We send a we send a notice to the elected officials. 
We ask them to sign up to speak and a, a list is made and that's what we go back. We can't keep going all over the place. We just wearing ourselves out. Elected officials from now on, if you want to sign, if you want to speak, sign up and call the office. Okay. I mean, I, I, have, I have a question, Chair. Yes. You know, we're talking about inefficiency. That's what you're talking about, where people have to register to, they have to sign up to, to speak and they have to give ample notice. And it's all about inefficiency. Yet this meeting is rampant with inefficiency. And I'm not talking to you, Chair. I'm talking to all of us as board members, especially those who come in to do a vote, but are ne we never see their faces. They're not participating in full meetings and they don't know what the hell is going on. We've been on Zoom or WebEx for over a year and we're still dealing with rampant inefficiencies and actually like complete disrespect for each other by not paying attention and being cognizant of what is happening. We're on this call until 1045 right now because it took us an hour to get through an election because some people don't even know other people's names. They're calling you Alice. I mean, this is wild. So where do we as a board and you as our chair and Simon as our vice chair, how do we wrangle everybody together? Because this is like unacceptable to have to do a second work day so that we can manage people's inefficiencies and, and lack of commitment to the work that we're doing here. I mean, I, I just have to say that because I just find this bizarre that we're, ta we're talking about wasting so much time to give people, and, and where's the democracy in any of the way that we did this election? You know, the whole thing is nonsense. And how much longer are we gonna be on Zoom that we have to continue to deal with this nonsense? The city is going back to work. Their vaccinations are available. I wanna see people in person instead of having them call Jerry in the office. I'm sorry, I'm aggravated. This is every month is the same thing. And we are completely disrespecting the community and each other by allowing this to continue. And it is not democratic. This is not community led. This is, you know, Jan, you're talking about the community making decisions and decide that that's not what's going on here. There's none of that happening here. I'm aggravated. I'm aggravated I mean, that we've been on this. You have to have I'm recommendations. So let's talk further. I think you have a very good point. People that care about this need to talk with each other and come forth with proposals. I'm tired of talking. We're talking about inefficiencies and we're All talking right. about people that sit on this board to maintain power and control that do not contribute, do not know who anybody else is on the board, do not show their face, do not participate in anything that happens in our community. That's what we're talking about. So if we wanna be truly community led, then we need to be a reflective of our community. So our future elected officials and borough president need to make sure that they step up and B, we as board members have to hold each other accountable. I agree. I Thank you, thank this is you. Ridiculous. This thank is you, ridiculous. Dana. I, I understand your passion and I've tried to make these meetings as seamless as possible. That's why I just went through everything about how we set up the speaking. I've tried to make this as seamless as possible. As far yeah, as but going that, back Alice, what you're doing with chair, Chairwoman, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when you're talking about the speaker signing up as a way to create efficiency, that's like not even the problem. In fact, we should be hearing from people from the community and we should be hearing from each other. Like I wanted to speak tonight and I was told I couldn't because I didn't give 20 days notice. You know, like it's not about, that's not where the inefficiency is coming from and that's not where the disconnect is coming from. The disconnect is coming from the unbelievable power and control that a few people have and how they use and manipulate that power and control to keep the mass of the community out of decision making and agenda driving. That is what I am saying. And I want to be on the record saying that that is the problem. Okay, Dana, you, you didn't speak because we go by the bylaws. We have to go yeah, by the bylaws. You know, what, you know what, Chairwoman? There's tons of bylaws that you guys violated tonight. 
You violated bylaws tonight. The fact that this was at the in the election, the candidates weren't in the agenda is a violation of the bylaws. So if we and I could give you a whole list of other ones. I don't want to hear it. I want to hear that everybody on this board that especially as an executive leadership is going to step up and do the things that they are supposed to do based on the bylaws. This is out of control. Every month, this is what our meeting looks like for five hours. And having people call in on the phone that we don't see their face, how do you know who's calling? Because we know them. And how much do they care about this community and what happens here if they're just calling in for a vote for the executive committee instead of being on this call for the five hours every month to make votes about things that matter. Uh, Dana, there's people on the phone and on computer computers in every meeting. There's nothing to say a person can't call into a meeting. I understand what you're saying. I take it seriously. And right. any of the issues that I can address, I will address it. But I cannot, I cannot legislate respect and do your due diligence. People signed up as adults to get on this board. It's not up to me to patrol them and make sure that they conduct themselves accordingly. We sign up because this is what we want to do. And it's not my position to, you know, keep after you to do what you're supposed to do. If you're here, you're here. If you're not, you're not. Everybody miss meetings. Everybody, you know, we we gotta be, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta give people, grant people some some grace. People do what they can do. I can't legislate uh, morals and values. And I understand what you're saying. Like I said, anything that I can address, I will address it. If there's anything further that you would like to discuss with me, feel free to call me up. I'll talk to you about anything you want to talk to. Thank I you. Appre I appreciate that. My message was not just to you. It's to this entire board. And for people that claim to have certain values, but don't actually represent those values in these meetings. It's to everybody on this board. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you, and I, I'm sure we, we all hear you preaching to the choir. We're here, we hear you, and hopefully people will hear what you say and try to do better. Is there any, any other, any other? Uh, oh, Madam Chair. Can I say something? Yes. Um, okay. Madam Chair, I, I, I'm new here, so you all may have discussed this before, but I mentioned it in the chat uh, to, to Dana's point. Um, that there are relatively new tools that um, were created in WebEx um, that could help with some of the efficiencies like voting and things like that so that maybe it wouldn't take um, an hour and might give uh, give chance for um, you know the elected official representatives uh, to speak because um, I know Ben and, and someone from the mayor's office had asked to speak as well. So um, if it's time, maybe the tools that are available and I'd be happy to connect anyone um, whether it's you or anyone um, helping to facilitate the meetings, um, introduce them to those tools to see if it might work with with some of the time um, issues. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I just it is so disrespectful that we have community board members that just don't even know the names of the executive board. That's inexcusable. I, I, I'm, you know, it's. They, they don't even know the names, and I'm, I'm sure they didn't know the issues we were di discussing, which are very important. So I think this, um, as the chair, the executive board, you need to hold people, community board members, more accountable. Otherwise, why are they sitting? You know, they, they're not participating. They didn't even know your name. They didn't even know um, Del T or Gina. I mean, it's inexcusable. So that's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. Also, Madam Chair, can I say something? Because uh, a month ago, I believe me and Eric Brusaitis, which were part of the attendance committee, we had called for a, an attendance committee meeting, which uh, we had for months, it's one year. People, you know, they leave after 20 minutes. We don't even know who they are. Now I discover, of course, as Dana said, they don't even know who the, your name is, you know, but why we didn't have an attendance committee meeting why now the meeting was even postponed i don't know for what reason to the summer when the year is is done is finished we should have had that attendance committee meeting several months ago i called for it publicly and eric prusidis called it too 
just to clarify, that's where it's not up to you, but it's up to the committee. And I'm not the chair, no, Eric was the chair. Actually, yeah. well, three years ago, we, we set new rules with the, atten the attendance committee set rules, trying to regulate some of the, the problems we were having with attendance and with people coming to meetings to sign in and then leaving the meetings and not being there throughout the meetings. We've been down that road before and nothing, nothing ever came of it. And we really need to do that. For the record, Rabbi Niederman is the chair of attendance. I think we know that, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Majority of the committee is not having meetings on a regular basis. I'll send an email and ask them to have a meeting. Check it out. Excuse me, Sonia. Wasn't there Can issues? Something? It, it's not, it, this issue is not because of COVID or, or the WebEx or what have you. As long as I've been in the committee, as long as I've been on the board, it's been an issue forever. The attendance. And I know that the board president and they, they fight us back and do process a whole bunch of nonsense. The recommendation to remove people because the attendance have been made. We have to figure out from the higher ups what's going on because I know for a fact there was recommendation made before we move, put back all of a sudden, excuse absences, what have you. It's not the committee, it's not the executive, it's not the attendance. I'm talking about those who are doing the appointing and the, and the not, and, um, the appointments. I think those are people we have to address. And as far as anybody, as far as going back in person, we have not been released to go back in person. The governor will tell us when to go back. We're not, you know, we get emails on it after every month. They tell, we're, we're still, you know, we're still out. Until they tell us we can go back in person, we will be doing remote. Well, um... Somebody else has something they want to say? Yes, thank you. Um, then Hello. District manor, manager reports and the uh, chair chairpersons reports. We haven't seen those in about a year. Will those uh, start up again? Well, you want you want to consume the paper. <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about bylaws. Okay, somebody else has something to say. You don't I have to print heard them. Yes, you can you can send them a print them one uh -huh. and scan them. You don't single paper. They're set electronic. No, but they're bulky to send through your computer. And, you know, oh my god. They're very bulky. So I think we'd like to see the reports, Dialis. We don't have a problem where there's nothing to hide. Did I hit Simon? Was you trying to say something? Well, I'm just saying, I, I, you know, we keep on hearing this issue, but the main concern is, is that we voted uh, many years ago uh, that at 9 o'clock we have to close the meeting. I do understand the issue of uh, voting, you know, um, uh, about the voting issue that takes up so much time. But, um, look, uh, you know, the vote takes time. and it took, it took time today. I don't understand what, you know, some... Um, I would use the word crying baby because, you know, it takes time, it takes time. But what can you do? If you drink to the COVID issue, uh, it takes another hour to, to the, you know, it's more than an hour now. It's 11 o'clock nearly. You know, so that's the problem. We, the the meeting taking so long, and many people can't sit for the meetings four or five hours, you know. It should be finished by nine. So you have to understand uh, some board members can't sit out the whole meeting. That's all. Is there any other new business? If nothing else, I hope all minds are clear and we're taking into consideration everything that was said and try to do everything, make uh, sure that we do the suggestions that everybody wants to do. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for trying to be mindful of the time. At least we're getting out about an, er an hour earlier tonight and I thank Madam everybody Chair. for their compliances. And Madam I would Chair. like to have a motion to adjourn. Madam Chair. Yes. I just wanted to say, you know, we've got to really look at ourselves. This is a commitment issue. It's not about anybody else. We have to check ourselves and see how we're going to measure accountability. And I make a motion. And the meeting. To adjourn. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. Meet and adjourn. Good night, everybody. Good night. God bless you all.
Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. See you next month. Good night. Good night. Stay safe. Stay well. You too. Thanks, Dad.